Trigger, it's the goaltender that out duels the other guy. To me, right now, if I'm not Cairns, I'm looking down at uh, McCloskey at the other end and said, I'm going to out duel you. And if you're McCloskey, I'm right where I want to be in the championship game. If you take a look at the Celotown Abbey's Lodge, and they announced the All Star team on Friday night. The Abbey's, uh, with, uh, let's see, 41 wins in the season over a 48 game schedule. Only Willie Hublu uh, is nominated as an All Star for the Celotown Abbey's, but during the Fred Page Cup, a little bit of a payback, I think, to the Abbey's with Yetman and Maxwell both being named to the All Star team here, as well as the uh, goaltender Mark Karens. And uh, those three uh, particular players have played so well for Celotown, uh, in particular over the last two weeks. But, uh, and it, it comes back again to the old adage if you're the team that is winning, your team is winning, and uh, we'll take the team awards over the individual awards, even though they're very nice to have. But they'll all trade them in for one, as I think that commissioner goes around Georgia, weighs 30 pounds, but it takes a whole team to lift it. That's the Stanley Cup. And right now, the Fred Page Cup is what they're looking for right now, and they'll trade everything they can to get this one in here now. As you have these Forbes Kennedys coming to center ice, George, we're getting the round of applause from the fans. Well, it's a big day for Forbes Kennedy. Uh, he has been around the hockey scene in Prince Edward Island for as long as I can remember. I remember, of course, uh, Forbes' first year back uh, to the island here uh, as a coach. He, he coached in Summerside, the Summerside Crystals, and it was a, certainly a delight to have him as a coach. And that was a few years ago. He's been around for about 30 years. He never won a Maritime Championship until this year. Uh, he wins it this year. He's trying to take the next step down with the Fred Page Cup. And, uh, uh, with Forby, you either like them or you're not with them, but uh, this season there's an awful lot of guys who uh, appreciate the Forby Kennedy done. Well, you know what they did? The team just presented Forby with a thank you for getting them this far, which is a very nice gesture on their part. And, you know, Forby doesn't like to go out on the ice. The only time Forby Kennedy ever liked to go out on the ice is when he had the skates on and the stick, and there was nobody wanted to go out with him. And that's a, there's a difference right now, but that's nice. Uh, I know Forby is in embarrassed in the sense because he has to walk in and get to put that's a nice gesture on behalf on behalf of his team and right now the other gift that he would like to give to them is as i mentioned being able to skate around with that fred page cup to allow you to play another week of hockey well we had a chance to take a look at the hawksbury hawks a couple of times and i keep looking for number 25 matthew Ouellette. To try and uh, step forward here for Ouellette. Uh, he picked up 108 points during the regular season in the Central Ontario Junior Hockey League. 40 goals and 68 assists for 108 points. And uh, that was done in 54 games. So he's averaging two points a game uh, within his league. And come playoff time, he almost picked up two points a game as well. 28 points in 15 playoff games. But was looking for him here in this Fred Page Cup and had a hard time finding him, Rod, until last night when uh, the overtime took place. And he was a bit of a basket hanger around the blue line with the Quebec dumping the puck in and working it inside the uh, hot zone and a couple of opportunities. The puck popped loose in front. Eventually, it squirts loose to the blue line, and then it's going to be uh, sent ahead to Ouellette. He will break it from center ice on in, and he buries uh, the Valley Field uh, Braves with the overtime marker. Ouellette uh, has not been a huge factor for his hockey club in this series, but he's one guy here this afternoon that uh, the Hawksbury Hawks might look forward to to lead them offensively. Well, you, get to, you know, when you hear about guys that have led their team, uh, you've always got to worry about those guys, and sometimes uh, the teams know that, and they shadow these fellows a little bit more. That's why they don't perform in shooting games, but it's always a key game. You know, how many times have you seen the big guy come through and get the point for you? You know, William Hublu has done a, a nice job for the Eddies, but has not been the dominant player that you and I have seen him. But maybe today's William Hublu's day. I mean, Ryan Maxwell, who's been just steady all through this season on the playoffs, uh, you know, Yetman has come on, and we've talked about those guys, but it's the other guys that you have to remember. Even though the line goes out and scores four goals and you win a 4-3, the other lines didn't allow any more than three goals, so they're all doing their job too, you know, and uh, it's all a team effort. And it, when you look up and down the bench, uh, you know, I talked about John McAdam. I think John McAdam defensively has done just an outstanding job in the blue line because he just, nobody beats him wide, and he gets the puck out of his own zone. And, you know, John McAdam, a first-year player, so you got to think of the pressure that's on him, not only because he's a first-year player, but because of his dad. And, you know, there's always, of course, being a defenseman with his dad being a forward, I just got to say, you know, I know my dad did a little more scoring than I do, but he's got the makeup of his father in that he's a competitor, and we all know what his father was as a competitor. Did he ever lead by example out there? And uh, certainly a, a tribute to his family being able to play as well as he has here in this uh, season and in the Fred Page Cup. Rod, of course, they are honoring the uh, committee that uh, has worked so hard for this Fred Page Cup over the last 12 months. And again, it just shows uh, uh, that uh, the island can host uh, a major tournament like this. Uh, 
this one has been a huge success with the Abbeys uh, selling out to, or close to it on, on most nights. And, uh, uh, you know, we continue, and I don't want to belabor the point, but there's a lot of fans from Surrey who could miss uh, all throughout the, the playoffs here watching the Sellertown Abbeys take place. But uh, in order for the tournament to be a success, it has to be supported island-wide. But again, whether the tournament's held in Summerside or Charlottetown or some other place within the province, uh, it usually does get well supported from uh, all islanders. It does, and uh, what a great volunteer base there is on Prince Edward Island, that uh, you don't have to go far to find that type of reception for whatever you are hosting. And it is nice that they're honoring various people here, and they just honor the rink staff, and a lot of time they're the unsung heroes because they're the guys that make you get through the ices, run are in perfect condition. They also make sure everything's on time, they make sure the stands are clean, they make sure everything, and all that is part of it. And uh, it's just kind of real neat, and I, I mentioned to uh, Billy when I was talking with him, Billy Mulligan, how this facility, especially with the entranceway and the, the, the space you've got between the arena and the, where you walk there, that you can do so much out there. And you take a look at all the booths that are down there, and that really helps you with uh, displaying if it's sponsors of the tournament, their wares, or, as they did today, the history of the Charlottetown uh, Forum, which was a tremendous success. And they put all the memorabilia out, and they had a room for able to do all that stuff. Part of it, and you know, Billy is right, and everybody that is standing here today that's a hockey player uh, that's from this area or from any area is a result of somebody else taking you to a game either your parents or a coach or somebody looking after you through the years and it's nice to be able to honor as they have the number of people here in the pre-game and, and the post-game by presenting them with a plaque thank you for all that you've done but george the list goes on in every community and that's the thing that they're talking about you thinking there's not a community that somebody didn't look after taking youngsters to the rink at six in the morning or the whatever. Summerside, it is. of course, is a strong base, and we're well aware of that. It, uh, but also the other communities as well, when they host uh, provincial championships or uh, uh, maritime championship of some sort. In every community, there's a group of uh, you say these volunteers who always come forth, and uh, they deserve credit. Well, you think when you're, when you're a youngster, if you, if you played hockey or any sport, there always had to be a coach. Right, and that's the big, big part of the whole thing. Okay, Rods, we're just moments away from the Fred Page Cup final. Back in a moment, this is the Fred Page Cup on All East Country 1240 CJRW and the Ed Channel Island Wide Channel, or rather, Channel 8 in Charlottetown and 16 in Summerside. After 85 years of serving you, Henderson and Petmore wants you to drop in to see what they have in store. It's casual and dress wear from all your favorite names. Formal wear for weddings or proms. Plus, all the other accessories to add that final touch, including presences and a great selection of fine gift wear. Visit Henderson and Cudmore today in Waterfront Place in Summerside or Confederation Court Mall in Charlottetown. Your vehicle needs the proper care and parts to get you where you want to go. Auto Sense Auto Parts at 601 Water Street next to the Min Wang Restaurant is your vehicle's best friend with their quality name parts and very competitive prices. With over 146 stores of buying power, you know you'll get top quality brakes, engine, clutch, ignition, and electrical parts. Check out the two 5 horsepower compressor with AG45 GFM countdown construction. Please fill in the book. Welcome to the next stop. See you next time. The club are fully licensed and offer great hourly rates for anyone who loves the game of golf. They're open daily, Monday to Saturday, 9 to 12.30, and on Sunday from 9 to 10. Call for your reservation today in Summerside, 888-2582, or in Charlottetown at 894-GOLF. Back at the Civic Center in Charlottetown, the referee for the Fred Page Cup Final is going to be referee Norman Beck. To my immediate right, we've got the starting goaltender for the Charlottetown Abbeys. That's the goaltender, Mark Cairns. He carries a record to a Fred Page Cup action of 2-0, and, oh, and it goes against average of 2.50 into this uh, Cup Final today. For the Hawksbury Hawks, they'll come back with Garrick McCluskey, who will even his record with a win last night in overtime at 1-1, one and, one, and it goes against average of 5.75. Rod, both teams are ready to rumble. 
They are, and you know what somebody's going to say, who's the pressure on today? I say the pressure's on both teams because somebody's got to win to move on. So the pressure is even today, I think, no matter what anybody thinks about it. Off a face-off, Brad Rice will send that one quickly all the way down. He will get it, but uh, from his position outside of his own blue line, I think it'll be the call against the Charlotte Town Abbey. So the resumption of the play will take place to the right of goaltender Mark Cairns, who has to stand tall here this afternoon, along with his opposite, Derek McCluskey. They will be instrumental in who's going to walk away from the city center here with the Red Page Cup. Well, if emotions are part of it, you know that Hawkesbury's on a high after winning an overtime trailing all the way through that hockey game. But you also know the Abbeys have emotions as well because they've had just a great week so far and they want to cap it off here this afternoon. And a pretty, a pretty good run here of a couple of weeks, actually, as it'll be Chris Kellum who will smart handle the puck in over the line. Here's Kellum now off the right boards. He's pinned up against the boards, and we've got an injured player, and it looks to be Yetman, Rod. Yetman got hit behind the play, and he's favoring his leg, which would be a, a real blow to the end because there's anything seriously wrong with Yevon, but he stayed down as soon as he was hit, and it looks like he's favoring the knee, and uh, it was a knee on me, I'm not sure, I think in behind the play, and uh, right now being attended to by the training staff, and it's really one of those things that you really wonder when the guy hits knee on me, there's always going to be yeah, some hope that uh, Pat Yetman can continue here in the hockey game. Uh, he has been uh, a huge plus for the Charlottetown Abbey. And uh, he is being uh, guided off the ice here. And that left leg, they tell us that it was a knee-on-knee -knee contact. So uh, there is potential there for serious injury without question. And he's uh, hopping along, in along the bench area. Coach Forbes Kennedy over talking to him and giving him a pat on the back. So the Abbey uh, are looking at uh, Pat Yetman in the injured mode here right now. We haven't seen that all year long, and Yetman is going to try to walk it off and see if he can, uh, if he can uh, continue to play here. And the Abbeys are hoping that uh, things will come around for Pat Yetman. It'll be wired in by Charlottetown. It comes around the boards. Metzger, now as it comes outside the blue line, tries to tap it back in again. But it'll be LaFleche for Hawksbury. He plays into the right corner. Here's Cairns now trying to wheel it around. LaFleche is the first man there. Back to, to Beaumont. His drive, this one right to the goal, juggled by goaltender Cairns, but it'll drop down right in front of him. He'll hold on to make the save. Well, again, not a lot of uh, play with three stoppages in the early going, but, uh, you know, it's always nice to get your first shift over with when you get to a game like this. You're sitting in the dressing room. You're kind of anxious. You do your little routines that you go through to get yourself ready, but nothing is better than to feel the ice on your skate and to feel the puck on your stick to get it going. From the face-off, trying to break it back to his own line is Willie Hublu. He leads it to White, laying across the line, having trouble controlling it. Now sends it to McCluskey, and McCluskey, he will hold on. You know both goaltenders are going to do this this afternoon, Rods. Anything potentially uh, loose in front, they're going to gobble it up and start at a 50-50 start. Well, you've got to rely on your face-off then to win those face-offs, and that's the idea, right? especially in the early going. Let's slow it down. We don't want to give the other team a chance to get a little bit of a, you know, flow going inside our blue line until we get ourselves back in high gear. And both goaltenders have handled the puck now with each the shot, so they're ready to go. Here's right in back in behind his own goal. Lugs it now to the far alley. Right to his own blue line. Tries now to push it forward. And Daze couldn't come up with it. White now takes uh, control, looks to bring it over the line. His pass is going to be picked out by Lafreniere, and he will advance it into the neutral zone. This one intercepted as well. It'll be tapped back down by Sims, and it'll miss the target right in back of his own goaltender. And looking to lead it to Lafreniere, who pours it up the right side. Lafreniere being held off the puck. Joining the play now is right. He will scoop it in. It's in and around. Cairns cuts it. Off in back of the goal. Here's McAdam looking for White on a crossover pass to the open wing. Hublu chops at it, but joining the play now is going to be Neal. Neal in across the line. He eludes a check, but leaves the puck behind. As it'll be controlled by Cluche. Now back to Rio in across the line. Rio, a first-team all-star here in the Fred Page Cup, tries to ward off a couple of checks. He will slide the puck to the half board right side before it'll be picked off by the Abbeys. And they will send it to a big circle at center ice. Cluche, he stands in the clear with opportunity. Lafreniere now, he will loop with the puck at his own line. Lafreniere to the checkered red line. He will pack the puck in off the right corner. It's going to be run around the boards by Sims, looking to keep it in. Here's an opportunity by Seguin. His drive gets to the net, easily denied there by goaltender Mark Karen. Both teams now working the near board, trying to loosen it up. It's going to be Grant McPherson on the mid-board to the left of goaltender Mark Karen. They will seal the puck up there. Face-off coming. 
inside the Abbey zone. No scoring to report on. We played the opening two minutes and 13 seconds, and uh, Rods were looking for Pat Yetman to return to the ice. He's uh, walking behind the bench right now, still getting some attention. George, one point we haven't made, and is seven of the Abbey sat out Friday night's game, remember? So they haven't been on the ice Friday, Saturday. You know, when you've been going in the series like they did this prior to this one, you're kind of in a So it's going to take you a couple of shifts really to get yourself back into that mode, but that's not an excuse. It's just a fact. You've got to get going, you know, and it takes that little bit to get yourself mindset as well, ready to go. Here's St. John. He angles it off the boards to center ice. Now Cousineau is capable up against the board in the neutral zone by a clean hit there by Brad Rice. Puck up center right, fired in by Benoit. And it's loose in back of the Abbey goal with Brad Rice taking control. He will outlet it. And it'll be cut off by De Beaumont, and he will drive it right back in again. Rice backs it up in back of his own goaltender. Looks to find a man open. That's Nick McGowan. He packs the puck off the board outside of his own blue line to Taylor. He will give it away at center right. Here's De Beaumont looking to flip it right back in again. Facing after this Brad Rice. Rice now deep inside his own ice. He will give the puck away to uh, number five. That's going to be Corey Baker. Baker gets it again right through the crease. He will send it. And it comes back to the right, right off the far point. His drive. And stepping down and blocking that one will be Nick McGowan. And it's going to go out of play, creating the stoppage in play. No scoring here in the opening three minutes and two seconds of the Fred Page Cup final here at the Civic Center in Charlottetown. Full house. And they are here looking to cheer on. There's Charlotte Town Abbey. Pat Yetman is on the ice now with his line mate, so we'll see just how he's able to get it back in gear after taking that hit. Just he wants to play, you know that. And oh, how yeah. nimble he is, only time will tell. So he's trying to uh, ignore the pain and continue on here. Face off top of the right circle. Abbey draws to the far boards. Maxwell doesn't come up with it. It'll be McAdam who will have to hunt it down deep inside his own real estate. Here's McAdam. He will angle it off the boards to center ice. Picked off by right. He, in turn, will give it away. Maxwell tries to rerun it to, to rather now to Yetman. Yetman at the blue line. This is off into the corner of the right of the goal of Ontario. Now it's going to be kept in by McCannum off the left point. Here's Chris Kellum. Kellum off the left wing, looking to feed it in foot. This one on the second Maxwell. He never does uh, get the puck to behave on his stick. Here's Yetman dancing with it. Down he goes between the rings in front. And starting back now will be Hawksbury. Here's Corey Baker. He drives it in. Rebound in front. And Baker now, he on that clear end, will... Uh, Fourth goaltender Karen to come up with the long distance save. Knocked down to the play is Daze. Daze. He tries to uh, re control it. But it'll be Kluche. Kluche to Daze. Asquel Daze. Can't get the handle on it. As it'll be Pat Seller. Seller now. Deep inside his own territory. He will give way to Brad Sims. Sims along the goal line. Now looks to try to clear it out to Willie Hublu. Finesse move. At center right. Here's Hublu to the outside team now. Roots it back to the hash, hash mark. Looks to control. And then we'll give it away as it'll be sent back by Lafreniere to center right. Here's big Mike White now, White it across the line. He tries to find an opening that he'll have his pocket picked and it'll be shipped the other way by the Hawksbury Hawks with the Abbey's regrouping. Sims to White, the one-timer, across the ice to Pat Seller. Seller hits his own blue line. Stick handles with it now. Neutral zone circle drives it in. This one goes through the crease. No icing. And it'll be Cluche. In back of goaltender Derek McCluskey. No scoring in the hockey game. McCluskey steps it out to the side. He will angle it off the board to center ice. Right. And Pat Seller is going to be pinned up there. Burho can't come up with it. And it'll be Ben Metzger. He will cruise in back of goaltender Mark Karen. Here's Metzger. He will send it out to White. White now. Through center ice to Willie Hablu. Hablu on the fly. Tries to ward off a check. It comes loose. Joining the play is Burho. He can't get the lumber on it. It'll be McCadam. He will have to try to control it. He will send it in. St. John for Hawksbury. Banking it off the board. Looking for DeMomont. Says he will lug it to his own blue line. Now catching a man on the fly. Here comes uh, Potsman wheeling in. Potsman sweeps it right through the blue of the crease. Back to St. John. His drive. This was sweet to the lip of the gold crease. And eventually, it'll be Willie Hublu who starts it back. Here comes Hublu. Through center. He drives it and sticks to side by McCluskey. It'll nestle in back of the goal. St. John. He will gather back up again. He goes with a wing-to-wing -wing pass to do Moba, looking for, uh, that's going to be Benoit. Now Potvin, he will golf it in. Karen's in back of the goal with McAdam now resettling it. Abbey, here's Neal. He takes a check but loses control of the puck. Rio as well. He will uh, have it worked off of his stick as it'll be chopped around the boards and eventually it'll be Miller. Miller for Charlottetown. Sends it to neutral territory where eventually it'll be McCadam trying to come up with it. He will give it away. 
and try to work it in his value, but he uh, can't get the puck settled in his stick. And it'll be rung around the ring there out of the stick of Miller. Here's Miller for Charlottetown. Craig Miller, he will try to fight off a check, lays the puck back inside the Hawksbury zone. Boss just banks it back out again. Looking for Sims. Sims will airmail it deep back inside the Hawksbury zone with right being pushed up against the boards. Here's Boss for Hawksbury. He will pack the puck off the boards to Veyu. He now and Neil will try to muscle one another. Puck will come loose temporarily. Abby's trying to work it back to the blue line. Here's Rice's drive, and this one misses wide on the glove side. Off the Hawksbury goaltender. That's McCluskey starting back now through center right. It's going to be Pelot in across the line, but uh, offside is going to be the call against the Hawksbury Hawks. No scoring here in the first moments of this first period. He played six minutes and 55 seconds. Abbey's in the Hawksbury Hawks. Tied up at zero. Big pad on hand, as you mentioned, the sold out crowd. Standing room only was up until last night. They sold that out, and they're here ready to cheer whenever the first goal is scored, especially if it's by the Abbey's. Also in the crowd tonight is Bill Riley. We're going to have Bill Riley join us in our first intermission, and the Bill has been around, I think, for a couple of the games, but we want to catch up with Bill's doing, and uh, we'll look forward to that when, uh, in our first intermission. No shortage of interviews here today, Rod. Oh, no, there should be lots of people around. Face-off coming outside the Abbey Blue Line. A little wing-to-wing -wing pass inside his own territory. Here's Seller eventually trying to come up with it. Now Benoit, he's upended. On a solid shoulder check there by Sims. As the Abbey's now try to load it back the other way. Here comes Taylor bringing it over. Taylor Spark scores! of the circle, George, you could almost sense if he hit the net, it would be an in interesting situation. As goaltender McCloskey, that's right through the wicket. Right through the wicket and beats him along the ice. But it again is the key at center ice where the defenseman stands up at the center red line trying to stop Ambler. I think it was going by, but the puck goes over to Randy Taylor. Hit the net and good things happen. This one right through the little V of the goal pads of goaltender Eric McCloskey. As McCluskey likes to fan the pads out of touch, and Taylor puts it right through the leggings. Now here's another drive. This one misses wide on the glove side. Rebound is going to be positioned in front. Uh, finally taking control of the Hawksbury, with Baker having control at center ice, takes a high stick. It'll be dumped right back in again by Charlottetown. St. job for the Hawksbury Hawks. He will try to regroup things now. Looking to the far side to, to Beaumont. He tries to advance the puck. Outside of his own blue line, here's Kellum right back in again with Maxwell driving to the goal. Maxwell now has to cut it back into the corner. It'll be Ryan Maxwell trying now to take a check. Feeds it across in front. Here's the up and by one. Oh, nice take short side. Rebound is there. And goaltender Derek McCluskey goes down. Yetman tries to park it through the side door. Yetman, if he won times, it might have had one, but he thought that if he could corral it, he would be able to do that little tuck. He's done it before where he draws the goalie over to the post, takes the shot, goes by him, and then tries to come back with the tuck. Goaltender McCloskey is able to stop that one. Yetman, George, looks like he's laboring just a touch out there because of the little bit of the knee injury in the first, what, 12 to 15 seconds of this period. But, boy, is he dangerous. And, again, the key play on that one, Ryan found himself, Maxwell. Yeah, found himself in position, knew where the open, open ice was, and they laid it on his stick, and uh, he almost made it 2-0 Charlottetown. And he's up by the score, 1-0. Here's right in back of the goal. He's stapled up against the boards. Boss now having trouble to get the puck to sit on his stick. Now it's fit in front. Here's an opportunity. Shot paid man off the stick of white. As he lights that one towards the goal, McCluskey comes out and challenges to make the save. Abbey's look to almost have another one, but uh, this one will be denied by goaltender Derek McCluskey. A penalty about to be called. Scoreboard remains 1-0 in favor of the Charlottetown Abbey. Hublu will go to the box for tripping. The goal coming at a 7-11, though, just moments before that trip. Randy Taylor, his first of the Fred Page Cup, with the assist going to David Ambler. And Ambler has chipped in with a couple of timely goals for the Abbey here in the ever. playoffs, as well in the Fred Page Cup. And Randy Taylor, rewarded for the hard work that he has put in, shift in and shift out. And, uh, you know, one of those guys, George, you're really happy to see him if he's able to get a goal, because he doesn't get a lot of them. Doesn't get him, a lot of them. For him, that, that's like his 500th goal. <laughs> he just made the celebration. Pasquale. Uh, now... In back of the goal for the Hawks. It will be looking to keep it in. 
Daze, he will park the puck. Cousineau can't hunt it down. Ouellette is in along the back wall as well. Fisher is a Daze. This one gets to the goal crease, and it's going to be blocked in front, Raj. I don't know whether it got to goaltender Cairns or not. I think it was blocked by defenseman uh, Sims, but it was right in front. And again, it's a quick one-timer, but Sims looks like he had it. If it had a guy through, it looked like he had it blocked up. Power play last night. Couple of goals for Hawkesbury. Today they're trying to do that here on the power play to tie it up. Here comes a streaky Mike White in across the line to Mackle. Steps and saves there right to the goal crease. The puck was shot, but off the stick there of goaltender McCluskey. Cousineau. He will roll it in and around now off the left wing corner. It'll be LaFlette for Hawkesbury. In back of the goal to Gibbons. Gibbons for the Hawkesbury Hawks. Stick handling with it. Trying to find Cousineau open in front. Lays it back to the right point. Right loads it up. This one is going to go wobbling wide of the goal. Sims tries to set it off the glass. He does. Outside of the blue line, Cloutier has control. And then looking to go to the bench is right. So right doesn't pick up that pass. And it'll have to be, again, taken control off by Cloutier. Deep inside his own territory. Up on the right side. Here comes Gibbons now. He'll streak by a check. Tosses the puck into the corner. And uh, Lafreniere coming late. Doesn't come up with it. And it'll be rolled back down the other way. And the Abbey's killing off the uh, largest majority of this man advantage, forcing Hawksbury to regroup back inside of their own blue line. Gibbons trying to funnel a pass. Now Gibbons and Baker. Baker finally takes control. As Baker cruises in over the line. Offside is Lafreniere on that right side. So... One uh, big too many for Corey Baker. And as a result, the faceoff will come outside the Charlottetown blue line. 11 seconds left on the man advantage for the Hawksbury Hawks. The Abbeys up on the board, 1-0 with 10.07 left here in period number one. Well, as soon as the Abbeys scored the goal, you see the same reaction to their team as we've seen in all four games of this tournament. That is, they seem to be kind of just going through the motions in the first four or five minutes. Once they get the goal, they start up the tempo. They've got a nice job killing this penalty off so far. Really just not allowing more than that one shot that was stopped by defenseman Sims. But since that really good positioning on the uh, defensive part of the penalty kill and now forcing inside the blue line to kill it off here the remaining second. Back to five on five as Hublu steps back on the ice. Gibbons, he will pick the puck in. Here's McAdam in back of the goal, working in close quarters now. Almost has it uh, fleeced off of his stick, but it'll be Hublu who will now glance it off the boards to center ice. Gibbons. Inside his own blue line, plays it to the open wing. Benoit coming late, doesn't come up with it. It'll be rolled deep inside the Hawksbury zone with St. John tries now to clear it out. Up on the right side to Cousineau with a touch pass. This one doesn't hit Benoit. And directing the play back is Dion Berho to Mike White. White in across the line. He sends it off into the corner to the right of the Hawksbury net. Now to Beaumont. Tries to dump it out eventually. On the fly is Potvin. Potvin, uh, he's got good speed, tries to go wide. Now he's going to be forced into the end wall in back of the goal. Cousineau in front, he's got a man. Can't hit Benoit with that pass. As it'll be popped loose, and eventually it'll be taken control off. Nick McGowan, he charges up the wing. McGowan now loads it up and fires it in. This one just off the blocker. Now goaltender McCluskey just gets a piece of it. As it'll be cleared back to center court. Just yeah. a piece is right, George. He just barely got a piece of that one. De Beaumont, he looks to try to bring it around the fence, he does, to Benoit, and Benoit quickly plays it to the Abbey side of center. Sims will pick it off and send it back the other way. Icing will be the call against the Charlottetown Abbeys. Abbeys lead it one to nothing, and the goal scorer, yep, Randy Taylor. He's the guy to get the Abbeys on the score sheet here this afternoon, and uh, I tell you, with Randy Taylor, that's a big goal for Taylor. It's a big goal for the Charlottetown Abbeys. It's got them rolling here. They're starting to play again with that uh, confidence that they had showed. The line of Taylor, Ambler, and uh, McGowan. Every team knows, what, even the guys that have just come in here, you don't see so much play being handled out of their own zone. They're moving the puck real quick, and they know they finished the check. Sometimes they get caught in a position before you got to like the aggressiveness that they show out there. They're coming out to give you the 35 or 50 seconds, whatever they got. They're giving you the best 50 seconds they got in their pocket at that time. Joey Neal leads the puck in across the line. Now trying to go to the goal. Here's an opportunity shot. Save made Miller to the goal with it. Down is McCluskey. He squeezes the leather stuffings together to hold on to make the save. That's it. It's going to be Miller who tries to drive to the goal. McCluskey, who's beaten early in the hockey game. Uh, we've got, uh, let's see, a second shot, I do believe, is where he was beaten. But after that, he has uh, stood up pretty good here to the Yetis attack. And it remains at one nothing in favor of Charlottetown. Again, another play at center ice where the defenseman stands up for 
Hawksbury and gets beat. Can't take the body. If you're taking the body, you got to get it. If you're going after the puck, well, you better get not getting either one in another two-on-one. So you had one goal scored in the two-on-one, another almost. Uh, you don't want to give up two two-on-ones in the first 11 minutes of this first period, which they have done. Only one 10-8. That one going to the Abbeys. Hawksbury going over one on the power play off the face off of the blocker side of goaltender McCluskey. Now both teams drag at the center ice. Here's Rio. He tries to spot a man open. He couldn't get to peel on the puck, and it'll be controlled by Wright. Wright now at his own blue line to Voss. Voss uh, cannot advance it as he looks to send it out of the stick of Rio, but it'll be picked off. But offside will be the call against the uh, Charlottetown Abbeys as they try to move it in over the offensive blue line. That's the play being whistled down. 8.03 left here in the opening period. Charlotte Town by the score of one to nothing will lead it. And our first period going to be again. Billy Riley, Rod? Bill Riley would join us. And I'm sure Bill will uh, uh, kind of put a stamp on what I'm going to say here. For a team that comes in like Hawksbury that's uh, stated as a big team, throws a lot of body checks. We haven't seen them throw a lot of body checks. They've been on the receiving end of the body check. And, this one, and especially in the game we did the other night too, George. I'm really surprised with their size that they're not trying to hit the Abbeys and slow them down. And Cadham lugs it to center ice off of face off, and he will scoop the puck in. Well, Flex trying to come up with it, but Charlotte Town, the offensive zone now off the right corner. Now the puck is going to be pinned up, and it does come loose and taking control of Gibbons. He'll go lane to lane to right up on the right side to Corey Baker. Baker tries to hit LaFleck. He's stiffened on the play as he comes in over the line. Puck is going to be jabbed off the boards and sent back outside off the Charlotte Town blue line. St. John tries to glance it back in again, and he does with Brad Rice, number 17 of the Abbey. Deep off a goal line, plays it to with a crossover pass to Maxwell. He will deposit the puck to center ice to tell him. Tell him now to Yetman. Yetman, he's in an extra gear. Tries to drive it in back of the goal. Looking to feed it in front. Penalty about to be called uh, against the Hawksbury Hawks. Abbeys are uh, looking to go to the man advantage. I don't think Hawksbury can handle the speed of Yetman on the outside. They showed that uh, with that penalty, but you remember in the game where they broke it open, George, uh, the two quick uh, goals that were scored by the Abbeys. Yetman goes down the side and Remember, he gets worn, and another one is a rebound. That when he breaks wide, they're unable to handle that. He's and got that extra gear, that overdrive gear that a lot of defenders have uh, trouble handling. And you really can see right now a concerned look on the entire bench of Hawksbury here. They just don't like the way things are going. Since the goal, it's been like a really a invisible here. It's all been Abbey's as they're getting chances here in the Hawksbury zone. Not the shot. Here now loading up. Here's the drive. This one whistles wide of the goal. Off the stick of Mike White. Shots on goal. Nine to six in favor of the Abbey's over the Hawksbury Hawks. After the play being whistled down. And um, yeah, referee Norman Beck uh, talking it and looking at the linesman who talks to right. The play does uh, come to a halt. And... Uh, Looks like uh, the Abbey's bench area, not happy with something beyond Burho is He went over to get, uh, they say that the puck went off. They're trying to say it went off a uh, Hawksbury player, but the referee says no, and that's why the faceoff comes outside the line. And you know who has the final decision on that. Like the umpires, George, they don't wear glasses, but they see everything. <laughs> <laughs> They've got the final call. It will be brought by Dion Burho. Now he looks to send it out. He does to White. White now. He streaks it off the right alley. Now looking to go to the goal. It's a goal in this one. He doesn't get enough mustard on it, but McCluskey does make the save. Here's Sims now off the left point. He loads it. Six feet. Puck comes in front. On to the stick of Willie Hablu. Hablu back to Sims again. The low shot to the net. Rebound right between the rings in front. White looks to load it up. The puck doesn't get out of his stick. And it'll be deflected uh, by... Uh, Diaz down the other way, or does they rather? He will send it right to the goal with Cairn finally taking control. It's going to come loose in back of the net where the Abbeys try to load it back up again. Here's White to Yetman. Yetman, he streaks over the line, splits the fence. He's going to go in. Gets the shot away. Shoot side. This one stopped. There by goaltender McCluskey. Nice effort again by Yetman as he tries to drive by the defense, starting back as Baker. Baker now with LaFleche in across the line. Baker trying to work by rolls it in front. The one-hander by LaFleche doesn't get away. And starting back in the reverse now will be Charlottetown. Here's Yetman on a three-on-two looking to park the puck somewhere. He'll play it off the stick of Brad Sims in back of the net. Here's Sims being rolled off the puck. And Cluche takes control. Cluche, he will just wobble it back to center right. Now with uh, Maxwell. 
looking for Kellum. Kellum and Yetman both cruising over the line. Who's going to back half the play? Nobody can find Yetman. Yetman now in back of the net. He tries to come up with it. Might will be wrong around the fence here, looking to keep it in his Metzger off the right point. Baker now, he tries to spank it off the board. He does to set a right. And backing it up is going to be Seller. Looking for Metzger, who's upended. Back to Seller. Seller now, he'll glide it to his own blue line and tell him he's nailed from behind. Down he goes. Buck will be sent in as we're back to five skaters aside. Here's David Ambler. Ambler trying to zip lock the puck up. And it's going to come uh, loose. Nope. Face off will come about as a result. With the Abbeys up on the score, 1 0, 5 0 1 left here in the opening period. Abbeys will take the lead. And it was a big effort by Charlottetown to loaded up that one off the stick of randy taylor that's been the difference in the hockey game at this point good job in the latter half of that penalty kill for hawks i thought they showed a little bit more intensity only thing i was surprised was that uh part there when he had the chance to come up and he slowed up and took the shot from the blue line i thought that he'd drive in a little more which you'd like to be able to do that to finish the play but as you're going in he did that and then he falls down allows the Abbey to come back and again it's an odd man situation so we've got uh, goaltender Derek McCluskey, who makes the face-off, uh, right off the save, right off the face-off, and then David Ambler and De Beaumont, they ride that short side post and get in a piece of uh, McCluskey is going to be Ambler. Uh, De Beaumont is looking for some sort of call, but uh, referee Norman Beck says no way. Play again, resuming to the sixth side. Uh, Derek McCluskey off the face-off. And they try to keep it in. Now they rifle it towards the goal. This one off the stick of McGowan. It comes out on the blocker side of McCluskey. Into the paint of the gold crease, but he will cover up to hold on. And he will make the save again. So again, the stoppage in play. And the Hawksbury Hawks trailing 1-0. 4.52 left here in the opening period. Randy Taylor's goal, standing tall at the 7-11 mark, was the time of it from David Ambler. That's Randy's first year of the Fred Page Cup. 4.52 to go in the first period. And Bill Riley will join us in our first intermission. And again, a capacity crowd on hand for well, this one. It's like game seven of the series when you look at it because there's no more games, and that's it. So he's all on the table for this one, and we can anticipate a very interesting uh, uh, build-up to the final 20 minutes. Here's Ben Metzger trying to keep it in. It's going to be wobbled to high into the slot area. And McPherson was about to unload it, but it'll be Miller who had temporary control. Now they jam it up into that left-wing corner. It does come loose back to the point. Here's McAdam. He knuckles one towards the goal. St. John gets the glove on it and looks to advance it, the play being immediately blown down. And the face-off again still inside the Hawksbury zone. The winner of uh, this afternoon's hockey game off to York and Saskatchewan Rods in the Royal Bank Cup the week of May the 1st to the 9th. And, of course, here on PEI, we know what that's all about. Well, it's an exciting week. There's no doubt about it. And, you know, when you're getting there, that means you are the Eastern Canadian rep carrying the colors of Eastern Canada. And, uh, you know, looking at these what's going on here right now these two teams know how close they are and you, you don't get that close that often so that's why you you figure you're going to have a real good game because everybody's going to give you everything they got in the tank even more if it's possible face off to the right of goaltender mccluskey it does come loose off the midpoint here's rice he wobbles it to the goal and it's fielded cleanly there by goaltender mccluskey again who gets the leather mitt on it to hold on to make the save and mccluskey playing it pretty smart in and around the gold crease area, not allowing anything to pop loose. No garbage there. He's forcing the, the face-off time and time again inside his own zone. We've seen that, of course, before and with uh, McCluskey. He likes to take control and create the stoppage in play. And as we say, take the 50-50 chance of the draw. Hopes uh, his men are going to win more than 50% of the face-off. It's drawn into the corner as Hawksbury does win it. Here's Kluche. He will fine-tune his way, and he will lay the puck outside of his own blue line. Hawks down. Baker in across the line. Here's an attempt driven towards the goal. This one off the stick of Gibbon, and it's easily stopped there by goaltender Mark Cairns, who has not been all that busy here, Rod, during this opening period. Shot 15-8 to eight in favor of the Abbeys, and uh, the eight shots directed towards uh, the Abbey goal have uh, not been of uh, great significance. A lot of them from far out, too. You, you, know, you love that as a goaltender. Because you can get those, you get the feel of it, you get to judge it a little bit as they're coming in. And of course, 15 that have been directed towards goal tend to the class game, at least uh, five or six of those have been pretty tough to handle. Now, piecing his way to the blue line is going to be Rice. Rice now lays on the stick of Willie Hublu. Hublu in the cross line. Quick wrist to this one missing on the blocker's side as it whizzes by goaltender McCluskey. 
And it'll be dumped back to center right. And finally, Sims and Baker. Uh, Baker nudges now. Hublu gives uh, Baker a bit of a shot. Sims isn't all that happy, and they uh, were jarred at one another temporarily, but the play being whistled down, so play resuming at uh, center ice with 3.53. Last year of the opening period, Abbey's with the lead of the score of one to nothing, the lone goal of the hockey game. It's off the stick of Randy Taylor and Rod Zicami. That's his first of the playoffs. First of this uh, third page oh. cup. Uh, by the way, up to the six minute and 30 second mark of this first period, shots was six to one in favor of Hawksbury. Isn't that a familiar story as it being in each and every game? The Abbey's been out shot in the first five or six minutes. I think they'd like to do that just to get ready. Here's Voss now, cruising it over the line. He loses control, joining the play. Darze, his drive is going to be off the glass. Get it in front, this one. Right at the lip of the crease, but the Abbey's gobble it up. They can't get it out. Voss off the far point. He sends it in front. Darze can't break to the goal. It's going to be off the top of the right circle as the Abbey's will clear it out. And we've got Maxwell. He will try to park the puck to the Hawksbury side of center ice. Now the Hawks will give it away. Yetman looking for Maxwell to come in. Uh, it'll, be, uh, it'll be controlled by St. John in back of the net. Voss. Now he has at least temporary control. He'll discipline the puck, sends it in back of the goal. Looks to get it back again. Here's Daze. He tries to uh, glance it off the board. Looking to rim it around. The puck is going to be kept in by Sims. As it'll come loose in back of the Hawksbury goal again. Here's Voss for the Hawks. He steps it out. Looks to clear it out. Ulek can't get the handle on it. And it'll slide back down the other way with Ben Metzger in cruise control in back of his own goal. Metzger playing to, to the open left wing. Nobody home there for Charlottetown. And it'll be Wright who will have to scamper after it. He will regroup things in back of his own goal. Wright for the Hawksbury Hawks. Steps it out right side to DeMomont. He in turn now will send it up ice. Eventually out of the stick of Cousineau. His drive missing wide from the blue line on the glove side of uh, the Abbey's netminder, Mark Karen. As it'll be airlifted now and it will be set out, and the play being whistled down here in this opening period with the Hawks trailing this hockey game with a score of one to nothing. Two twenty-five left in period number one. This is the Fred Page Cup Final. The uh, champion will be crowned the Eastern Canadian Junior A champion for the uh, Southern Ontario Province of Quebec and Atlantic Canada. And certainly a very interesting Fred Page Cup when you take a look at the scores. Probably the most evenly match Fred Page Cup in a while. I would think with everybody at least being in the the game's almost till the third period, and you know you just didn't know who was going to be a winner till you get that final buzzer sound, and and uh, it's very very uh, uh, a testament to all the teams that, that they prepared for this particular cup. Uh, George, they, they have some pretty good teams coming here. It'll be rolled outside of the Hawkesbury blue line. Potman now, he will drive it back down, and it'll be McAdam touching it up, and ice it'll be the call against the Hawks, and we'll have to resume it back inside the Hawkesbury blue line, of course. With Goaltender Derek McCluskey, he's a bit of an oddity here, Raj, in the sense that uh, we call him a southpaw, so he catches with the opposite hand, and we talked about that in the opening game, and for the shooter, from a shooter's perspective, uh, it can uh, cause some havoc. It can be, and the other thing he has, George, which I haven't seen in a, in a long time, he's at number one. You're right, you, you don't see that. Yeah, it uh, just looks a little bit uh, different, everybody for the high numbers, but maybe he's a traditionalist. You suppose and uh, believes that one is for goalies and then all the other numbers other than 31 belong to the other players. And some people in hockey would like to see it that way, Rog. Well, Your yeah. Bruins that way? Yeah, they, they, Pat Burns said enough of this high number business. He says uh, the only high numbers are going to be the salaries. Uh, <laughs> we'll keep the low numbers for the shirts, all right? <laughs> but there's a lot of those. <laughs> a lot of high numbers rolling off of there. <laughs> So we've got a full-scale change for the Hawksbury Hawks. Abbey's with Hublu, Burho, White, Metzger, and Brad Sims. Face-off in the circle to the left of goaltender Derek McCleskey. Off the face-off, Burho wins it to White. White now, he will be fleeced in the play, and it'll be sent back the other way. Now breaking back in again. Hawksbury now. Here's Baker, top angle. Let's it go to the midsection. Now, goaltender Cairns, he will easily stop that opportunity. Now, looking to control a flash. His drive, this one deflected wide. As it'll be controlled by Gibbons. Reflection off that uh, left corner. Looking for Baker, trying to keep it into St. John. Rolls now right uh, through the uh, goal crease area. And in back of the goal, where eventually, Gibbons looking for Baker. Baker can't come up with it, trying to keep it in his cluche, but it'll be White. It will take control. Here's White now, stick handling it across the line. Looks to go to the outside. 
And then he's going to be ridden up against the boards with LaFleche for the Ontario club. Cruz it in back of his own goal. Touch pass to Gibbons now. He tries to go uh, side to side with it. It'll be fired in by Baker with Brad Rice uh, taking control as he will control the puck on his stick. It sets to center right. Less than a minute to play here in the opening period. As we've got Ouellette who will give way. Now trying to help out he is going to be right. Right still with control of the puck. Sends it in. Left Brad Rice of the Abbey in back of his own goal. 42 seconds left in this opening period with the Abbey's up by one. Here's Yetman now. He looks like he's got all four wheels going here right now. Here's Yetman as he takes another hit off the side of the leg. Gets by the check, however, as the Hawksbury Hawks have to regroup. And it'll be driven in by uh, the Hawks. And this one off the stick of Lafreniere. And he will play it in deep. Maxwell tries to bank it out. It's going to be sent by Hawksbury in the turnover in back of uh, goaltender Karen. It's spun around the edgy with Maxwell along the half board still inside of his own ice. And he'll play it back to Rice. Rice tries to lay it out up through center to Yetman. And Yetman, he just couldn't get the puck to uh, catch on his stick cleanly as the buzzer sounds to end the opening period. And the Charlottetown Abbey's Roger, they lead it after one period of play by the score of one to nothing. They had an injury to Pat Yetman early in the hockey game. He looks to be okay. And as a result, again, after 20 minutes of play, it's the Abbey's over the Hawksbury Hawks for the score of one to nothing. We'll be back with the first period intermission in just a moment. This is the Fed Cade Cup final in all hit country, 1240 CJRW and the Ed Channel Island Wide, Channel 8 in Charlottetown. The Abbey's are playing right now. So I figure Hawksbury, if they've got something to show, this is it. they got to get out and they've got to really make the Abbey's feel that we're in this and we've got a chance at winning it. Shots on goal, Raj. Uh, 14 to 3, a run there at, at one particular point for the Abbey's. Overall, 15 to 9. But uh, uh, you have to think that perhaps Hawksbury would take that first period, trailing only by the, by the one goal. And with the big crowd on hand here, uh, Pups thought they might get blown away in the first 10 minutes or so, but that hasn't happened. It hasn't happened, but they better start taking the body, especially on the uh, Yetna line, or they're going to find themselves in uh, big trouble early. Awful face-off here. Yetman drives this one off the left pad of goaltender McCluskey, and from a pretty tough angle, Yetman lets it go again. This one is going to miss the target, and as will be Corey Baker, who will try to edge the puck uh, inside the fellow town zone, and he does. Maxwell. Well, uh, deflected in part uh, inside the Hawksbury zone. Now trying to work it in front. Now here's Maxwell with an opportunity shot. Save they get to the rebound. Down as goes into McCluskey. It's going to be off the uh, wall as it slides through the goal crease area. Here's Charlottetown now working the edge of the play. Here's Yetman tucking the puck in back of the goal. It'll be uh, Willie Hublu trying to uh, slide by a check. Hublu again now working off the left corner. Here's Willie Hublu. He's pinned up against the board. The Beaumont tries to... Uh, uh, lock him up and he'll get the job done as Hawksbury uh, they look to try and freeze the puck up but the Abbey's almost hit pay dirt here in the opening minutes of period number two again it's Yetman with his speed he gets the slap shot on goal to McCloskey to save but the rebound comes out another shot that misses but then it's a nice setup in the high slot for Maxwell he one times it the save is made by goaltender McCloskey. The rebound came out, just couldn't settle it down. He's knocked down from behind. He slides into the net and then it gets up in time to get some more action in the corner. But Ryan Maxwell again shows his corner work and behind the net. So smart with the puck. Off of face-off, here's Daze. He will look for right. Right uh, will get it uh, controlled. And then right, he's rung up against the edge and along the glass. Just along the penalty box area, but he looks to be okay. As Hawksbury will dump it right back into goaltender Mark Cairns. one nothing. Abbey's leading here in the early moments of period number two. It's going to be wrapped off the glass and out, but brought back in again. And offside will be the call uh, against the Hawksbury Hawks. Just opening up period number two. And uh, it's going to be Hawksbury trailing by one. Lots of scores in the National Hockey League last night, Rod. Uh, your Bruins losing overtime, but you have to be happy with that, with uh, uh, going back home with the split. Never happy with a loss, but if you're going to lose, you might as well lose it in OT because you're, you're that close to taking the two games and nothing leave. But they were a one all Leafs get a big win last night. Who would have thought with under two minutes to go that they would score two backhand goals on Van Driesbrook and uh, now have that series back to even. It's going to be an interesting first round. Always a tougher series of the first round was because you just never know what's going to happen. Flyers uh, deserved the win last night. Uh, Raj only seen probably about 15 minutes of it, but they played well defensively and uh, looked to play well for about 118 minutes. But uh, the last two minutes, things sort of 
Didn't go their way, obviously. Now it's going to be brought in front. Cairns is down. And it'll be McAdam who will take control. And he'll send it back to Willie Hubler. Hubler with White stepping in off the far side. Hubler can't get into the puck then. He's going to boot scoot in back of the goal. McAdam, he lets it go from an impossible angle. This one doesn't get to the net either. And it'll be Hawksbury bringing it back. Ouellette to the far side to Daza in across. Sends it to the goal. This one is the midsection of goaltender Cairns who quickly steers it into the corner. As Willie Hablu and White with White dishing it off into center ice. And it'll be packed right back in again off the stick of Kluche with Brad Sims of Charlottetown. He'll angle it off the boards, but not out. Benoit, now he will collide with his own player. And it'll be Charlottetown directing the play on the counterattack. Here comes Hablu off the right side. Tries to drive to the goal. He can't turn the corner. And it'll be Benoit who will scamper after it. It'll be sent out by Cousineau. Toss back in again, but joining the play now is going to be Sudan in the cross line. Hit drive, nice save off the right pad. And here's a tough angle shot. Wait to the goal. Cairns can't find it. He's down, and it was nestled just off that right pad before the play is whistled down. But Sudan with that long drive just from inside the blue line, Roger. And goaltender Mark Cairns had to come out in a uh, pretty uh, sharp save there to deny that opportunity. Well, the key to Mark Cairns' game is that he has been out challenging. If you're back in there, that one might be in the net. But when you're out challenging, of course, we all know the angle is a little tougher to score on. And he's looking through the legs. I think he picked that one up as it was just going by the defenseman, reacts with the pad. And, of course, the key is the read out is off to the corner, not directly back out in front for the guy who's following the play in to get to that puck. And then his own players, which the Evies have done very well, is to recover from any situation where they come in and they pick up their men in front of Karen's very well. Here's Benoit. He is going to be pushed up against the board. Pot there as well. He tries to kick it along. Benoit tries to steal. Hooked it around right through the blue of the goal crease it was. And it comes out the far side with the Abbeys. Now under a little pressure. They will roll it on its end all the way back down again. Ice will be the call. But nice play there by Hawksbury as they bring it around to that low glove side. They beat goaltender Cairns to the post. And they look to bring it through, and right through the blue of the goal crease, the puck went. It went all the way through the other side, and again, good recovery by the Abbeys, as they're not afraid to fire the puck down the ice. But Hawksbury, after seeing the Abbeys start quick here at the second period, with two quick shots and a nice save by McCloskey, have seen now where Hawksbury's coming back a little bit here, inside the blue line, got it now, not a lot of shots directed towards the goal, but maybe winning a little battle or two where they weren't winning them in the first period. Face off to the right of goaltender Karen. Here's Rio. He will uh, skid it towards the Abbey Netminer. And has been the case here this afternoon by both goaltenders. They're not allowing anything loose in front to be there for long. And Karen quickly covers up and again holds on. Looks like possible checking line out against this Yetman line for Hawksbury. Yetman, Maxwell, and uh, Pelham really doing a fine job again in this hockey game to get the puck up the ice. Here's Pelham. He'll spear the puck in. St. John for Hawksbury. He tries now to freeze it up. Now working in the corner is Pilon, and it'll come loose to Rio. Rio, he will uh, be stripped of the puck. It comes loose again into that corner to the blocker side. Now lifted towards the Hawksbury goal, but misses wide on that thick side of goaltender McCluskey, and it will be the Hawks starting to bring it back on the comebacker, but it's knocked down with a high stick, so the faceoff uh, will come about back on the Abbey side of center. And uh, rather the uh, Hawksbury side of center ice. And just inside their blue line, in fact, where well, we'll see the resumption of the play. Abbey's with a full sail change of players. Hawksbury as well, making some changes. Yetman out to take the face off against Gibbons. Gibbons draws it to the far side. And it's going to be tucked into the corner. Where it'll be controlled now by Wright. Wright. He tries to uh, send it off the glass into the neutral zone, and he does. Here's LaFleche now stepping in, tries to turn the corner. One hand rebound was there as well, but overstating it. And it's going to be Baker as he just can't uh, direct it towards the goal, but good opportunity there. Nice burst of speed by LaFleche as he turns the corner pretty good. And he got McAdam a little on the outside, but again, where McAdam, he recovers so well that he doesn't allow the shot to get through, and the Miami's cleared it almost at a two-on-one. It was just a little bit behind Yetman. Here's Callum trying now to advance it to Yetman. Yetman doesn't uh, get it settled. And it does come loose along the blue line and finally working and taking control is Gibbons. Gibbons for Hawksbury drives it in. This one sticks aside easily. Gibbons gets his own rebound. Off the hash marks near lane. 
It will be finally Yetman who will try to send it out. He does the center right, driven right back in again. This one easily caught there by the Abbey's debt miner. And it'll be steered in back of the goal where we've got McCadam. He tries to head man it ahead, looking for a man open. That's going to be Kellum who sends it in deep inside the Hawksbury zone, regrouping and looking to charge back the other way as Daze. He uh, rolls off a check, allows now the Beaumont to bring it up to Lafreniere up on that right side. Here's Lafreniere. He has a step as well. Sends it now and almost cut. Gold, the uh, Abbey goaltender, Karen's cheating in that short side, Roger, as Karen started to leave the post, but uh, all of a sudden the shot is directed towards the goal. Well, he did just uh, a fraction almost too early, but again, that's where the uh, players have collapsed and helped him out quite a bit if he happens to make one of those little moves. Here's McGowan now. He tries to scamper across the line. He doesn't uh, advance on the play, and It'll be sent the other way by Lafreniere with Brad Sims. He now scoops to his own line. This is up on the far side. Here's Willie Hubble. Hubble stepping in and over the line. He's up ended on the play. The Beaumont will take control. He will jack the puck off the boards and send it to center right. Here's Benoit. He cruises in over the line. He can't uh, advance any further with it as the puck slides into the corner of the right of the Abbey net. Now it does pop loose. Trying to take control there is Cousineau, but it's going to be scooped into the a uh, sold out crowd here at the Civic Center in Charlottetown this afternoon. Abbey's continue to lead here by the score of one to nothing with 14-12 left here in period number two. You know, guys, pretty happy today, George. Jim Kennedy sitting down here in front of us. Jim was in charge of ticket sales, as you know, for this Fred Cage Cup. And Jim's job, as he says, is done. He's got them sold out for today, and he's done a great job on those ticket sales. All I know is... He was probably the most phoned guy <laughs> the last 12 hours looking for tickets. That's the tough part of the job, but it is nice when you're in charge of ticket sales. Always been a little Barnum and Bailey in Jim Kennedy, hasn't there? Well, that's why they put him in charge of ticket sales. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to be Baker now trying to steer the play the other way. It'll be fired in. It'll be Seller in back of the goal. He tries to control it. He will kick it along, looking now for Callum to Maxwell with a crossover pass off the right side, fires it to the goal, easily snagged there by goaltender Jarrett McCluskey again, and uh, he will uh, force the stopping to play with a faceoff coming inside the interior blue line to the left of goaltender Jarrett McCluskey. The winner, of course, this afternoon on their way to York and Saskatchewan next weekend to open up the Royal Bank Cup. It begins May 1st to the 9th. The Abbeys want to be there. And so do the Hawksbury Hawks. They all would like to be there, but uh, unfortunately only one team is going to go, and it's going to be the team that I would say that will work the hardest in this game is the one that's going to go. Here's Seller. Seller now. He tries to muscle off a check, lifts it to the goal. It's knocked off a stick in front and up off the netting in back of goaltender McCluskey. And that one was wrapped at by somebody in front. We'll see where Norman Beck's going to force the faceoff. He says it's off a... Hawksbury sticks, the play will start again uh, inside the Hawksbury zone. This time to the right of goaltender McCluskey. He's been beaten for one. His second shot of the game right through the wickets of McCluskey and a drive by Randy Taylor. And of all the finishes that both clubs have, Taylor has the game's lone goal. And he looks as good as anybody when you let it go, too. From the faceoff, here's McCadam. He sends it to the net. This one into the catching glove of McCluskey again. He's down, fanning the pads out, and he doesn't allow the uh, puck to come loose, and again, he will hold on with uh, the faceoff in the circle to the right of McCluskey. Well, certainly the organizers of this Fed Page Cup would like to thank all the fans who came in large numbers to each and every game, and they surpassed what they had put down as some uh, sort of an estimate as they thought would be a good uh, crowd to be on hand, so congratulations to all those fans, and thank you very much for supporting the Fred Page Cup. Matthew Ouellette works it to the offensive blue line, and then allows Wright to pound it in. Big rebound off the blocker. Uh, goaltender Cairns, and starting back will be Charlottetown. Here's White across the line, but offside. Now White picks up a, a slash on St. John, who's down holding his leg, and for Mike White, an ill-time penalty, for uh, White to take the veteran, loses patience with St. John, and uh, it'll be White gone to the penalty box, and Hawksbury going to the power play for the second time. Second, uh, Hawksbury will go for the second time as right. Had to get a real good job killing off the first power play. There's been one power play for each team, and they are 0 for, of course, and both uh, 
And he's had a couple of good shots in the first part, like I said, up to the 52nd mark of their power play. But after that, Hawks Ferry got the puck out of the zone pretty good. This is the captain of the Hawks Ferry Hawks. So Mike White will get the two minutes for slashing. And now the Abbeys will be again trying to kill it off. So the Hawks, with the man advantage, will send out Matthew Roulette. And as well, Dazre. And uh, you look for Cousineau up on the right side. They've got Voss and Kluke along the blue line. Abby's counter with Yetman, Maxwell, Sims, and Ben Metzger. Inside the Hawksbury zone, here's Kluke. He tries to play it up top. It'll be Kluke now, then, who has to try to chase after it. As we've got Maxwell being upended, and Voss will loop it inside his own zone. Voss now to Kluke on the left board into the neutral zone up on the right side he's got matthew Ouellette. Ouellette now he tries to pack the puck home in front that'll be worked around the perimeter here's a drive by kluche this one is going to be stopped there by goaltender karen back to kluche again he can't keep it in as he can't settle it and voss now has to take control off the right side here on a wing to wing pass is kluche back to voss voss off the center seam in the cross loads it up this one off the stick of sims and the play being whistled down as the offside call will go against the Hawksbury Hawks. They've got a minute and 15 left here with the man advantage. They're trailing this hockey game one to nothing with 12.33 left here in the second period. Well, the Hawksbury Hawks had to be very cautious with the two penalty killers, and that's Maxwell and Yetman, as they steal the puck and almost get a nice two-on-one setup. So they, it looked like they had a guy shadowing Yetman <laughs> to make sure he wouldn't steal the puck on them. Boy, you got to... You got to wonder He's sometimes. That good. St. John now, his drive, this one, is going to be off a stick and into the netting again. So the play will uh, come to a stoppage, but the faceoff uh, will come inside the Abbey zone. As the Hawks continue to stand pat with Ouellette. Now he will uh, actually exit the ice here. Faceoff will come to the right of the goaltender, Mark Karen. Gibbons on the faceoff against. The veteran Charlottetown Abbey, Willie Hublu, and he's a veteran because this is his third year with the club, I do believe, Rod. Third year, and he's just uh, getting stronger every year. Here's Wright. It'll be angled in by St. Jump, and it comes loose. Sims now, he tries to golf it around, looking to keep it in. LaFleche and Lafreniere, and Lafreniere knocks it down, and, and with the glove on the puck, the play being whistled down by referee Norman Beck, who's right there, and he'll blow the play down again. 45 seconds left to the Hawks. Man advantage. And they are looking for the equalizing goal in the game that they trail 1-0. You know, we were talking about uh, the various players here in the Abbey. And when you think about it, William Hublow, and we say, uh, you know, he doesn't seem to be uh, standing out as much. You know what the problem is, is that everybody's watching Yetman now. <laughs> That's what it is. I mean, Willie's probably playing, you know, the same as he has all along. But Yetman seems to catch everybody's eyes. So... He's out there doing that, and yet Hubley still comes up, does a great job killing the penalties and the, everything that you ask of him. Now here, it'll be controlled with flesh off the point, gives it away, and the Abbey's now trying to break back at center ice. Yetman can't out race right, and we've got Gibbons who uh, will try to shake a check, and it'll be set in. Here's LaFleche trying to cut into the right corner with it. He works it now off the uh, sideboard, continues now to try to control it, back to the blue line to right. Right now, he's got St. Jean open. Back to LaFleche. LaFleche, top angle. Let's go. Rebound comes short side. This one. As the Hawks try to bank it home off the stick of Lafreniere. And looking to keep it in his right now. He loads up. Save made. Rebound comes to the bottom of the circle. Into the corner of LaFleche. As well, Gibbons in there. Neither one can work it free. Back to five on five. As we've got Gibbons. He's tipping up against the boards. Emmys. They will tear him off the boards. Back to center right. Driven right back in again. I was going to say that uh, was the first little bit of energy that the Hawks had to cheer about. They had something going, but again, uh, the Abbeys are able to clear it away. Here comes Ryan Maxwell and Yetman in across the line, dropping it now on the back draft to Maxwell. Off the boards now. It will be De Beaumont trying to uh, muscle off a check. He leads it to Pot Van. Here he comes. He goes right side as it'll be fired in by Cousineau. And he does so off the glass and into the sold-out crowd here at the Civic Center in Charlottetown. And everybody watching the game with uh, uh, an intense level, hoping that the Abbeys can pull it out, Rod. But uh, at times, uh, you know, the team, uh, rather the crowd has been a bit quiet. And uh, they are holding on here, looking for the Abbeys to uh, 
pick up the win, but it's a long way from a short at this particular point. Well, halfway point of the hockey game, a one nothing lead. Abby's have that lead, and certainly the fans are looking for another goal because you know with a one goal lead, you're one shot away from either being tied or, of course, there's Hawks Ferry looks at it the other side, one shot away from being down two. Here's Dion Berho. Berho has control, looks for Rice. Rice still inside his own blue line, tries to edge it off the glass, but right back in again now is Baker. Baker with a long reach now roams wide, sends it right into the midsection. Out there of goaltender Karens, and Karens will again squeeze to hold on and make the save. Shot to 12 to 4 in favor of the uh, Foxbury in this period, so you're looking at a little turnaround for them. Watching Ryan Maxwell here in the uh, last little sequence, especially killing the penalty, George. Well, you know, we talked about Yetman, and we have talked about Maxwell. They didn't find him as explosive as Yetman. Maxwell does all the little things. Pucks on the board. He puts his body between the player who's coming for the puck. He does all the things that you need to do to be successful in getting the job done, whatever end of the rink you're in. And I think more and more, anybody gets a chance to watch Ryan play. And then that little give and go he works with uh, Yetman. Here's Hubble, quick step, and it, trying to drive to the goal. And this one is going to be stopped in back of the goal. It will be... Worked along the board. Here comes Daze. Daze trying to lead it to Lafreniere. Back to Ouellette. Now joining the play. Stepping in. Hawksbury in front. Oh, wide open is Daze. And he just couldn't redirect it past the down and out. Goaltender Mark Karen. Yeah, starting back now on the reroute the other way. Hubble again now tries to get a step to the outside. Looks to drive to the goal. A penalty being called. And it's going to go against the Hawksbury Hawks. As the... Charlottetown Abbey will go to the man advantage, but the opportunity for the equalizing goal was right there, Roger. Well, it's right, and uh, it was Daze. He just was, uh, the puck was too far ahead for him. He had the, op the open side. The whole Hawkesbury bench stood up like they thought perhaps he had the equalizer, but it doesn't happen. And then Hublu, the first time he tried that move, he didn't work. He couldn't get it. This time he tries to go around the defense from the Bowman, I think it is, and he beats him, fires the puck towards the net, but it's hauled down. Now the Ebbies will go on the power play, and if this is anywhere uh, close to what has happened in the previous three games, this is where the Ebbies might score a goal and kind of take the wind out of the sails of the team that they've been playing here in the Fed Page Cup. Off of faceoff, puck is down, and it'll be lifted back into neutral territory by Hawksbury, driven right back in again by Maxwell. It spins around the fence, kept in off the left point here. Sims' drive, this one is deflected. And it doesn't get to the target. And then chopped out by Gibbons back the other way. Charlottetown will regroup. Sims along with Rice on the power play. Yetman, Tellum, and Maxwell. No surprise there. It'll be drifted off the boards and out. Then hammered right back in again off the stick of St. John. With Charlottetown reorganizing. Yetman to uh, Sims to Maxwell. Maxwell now. He scoots up through center ice to Tellum. To Maxwell, the ice opens up. Goes in a long shoot. Side made there by goaltender McCluskey. A timely stop there. Maxwell in front again, right to the blue of the goal crease. And it'll be deflected back into that far corner. Abbey looks to come up with it. Ah, uh, the Hawks. Gibbons will get it to the blue line and out. And then Daze sends it back. But there, you've got the guy you want, Raj. And Maxwell couldn't finish off. He couldn't finish up. But the play was all set up by the quick puck movement. Real nice free passes set that play up. And McCluskey is able to save his team right there with a huge save. But you do... Set up with the key again coming out of the zone. Three passes, and all of a sudden there's a guy in the clear. Here's Brad Rice. He will set things up in back of the goal. Dion Burho tries to sprint. Ouellette will pick it off. Eventually, Mike White will uh, try to cradle onto his stick. Burho uh, gives it back to White. White now. He tries to smart handle it in over the line. Dishes off to the right lane. Hublu coming late. Uh, can't gather the puck up. And it'll be sent back the other way by Hawksbury. And the Abbeys will have to, uh, again, take possession. It'll be Sims deep inside his own ice. Sims up the right aisle now. Here's Sims tries to ward off a check. He'll send it right to goaltender McCluskey. Wired off the stick there. Pluche, who does get it out. And again, the Abbeys will have to try to hunt it down inside their own blue line, and they do. Nice job so far by Hawksbury. Other than the chance by Maxwell, they have not allowed the Abbeys to get it set up inside the line, and it killed off the penalty. Well, we're back to five on five. Now breaking back in again is David Ambler. Ambler now, he muscles by one and another one before he fires it into the long corner. Randy Taylor for the game's lone goal to McGowan. Looking now back to Ambler. Ambler, he's de-iced in the play. Back to the blue line. Here's Metzger's driving. This one is going to be up over the target. 
Trying to pinch in as Pat Seller. Seller and Ambler both in there now looking to try and loosen the puck up. Ambler tries to muscle his way along, but it'll be Gibbons who will pack the puck around the board. McGowan will pick it off, and it's in back, and finally will be controlled by Kluche. He looks for Gibbons. Gibbons and a feather pass through center ice. And Lafreniere, rather LaFleche, he will take control, and he sends it in. Yeah, it's going to be Pat Seller off the end wall. He will field it cleanly. And here comes David Ambler. Ambler at center ice. In turn now, just pitches it right back in again. What a great job by that line, George. What, they got it in, they threw three or four body checks, almost had a shot on the net. You can't ask for any more than that from your checking line. Sent it in deep and kept it in deep. Here's St. John. He goes laterally now to Daze. Daze off the left alley, tries to cut to the inside, continues to go to the goal. Oh, nice play there by Cairns as he does the poke check on Daze. Daze almost had him beaten. Here comes Jeppman now the other way. Rice tries to stay on side, fires it in. As Hawksbury on the delayed offside will be allowed to reorganize again. They look to bring it out. It's tucked up by Charlottetown. Here's Jeppman back to Maxwell. Maxwell stepping in. Funny side's open. And goaltender Derek McCluskey will shut the door there as the Abbey's again going to the goal. But, um, you know, Rod, there hasn't been a ton of scoring opportunities in the hockey game, but we've seen three or four here in the last couple minutes of play. We have at both ends, and right there, McCluskey almost gave up too much at that time, but I think Ryan Maxwell thought he was going five-hole all the way as he let it go. But turnover at the blue line. This is one thing this line also does well is they anticipate where the puck is going, put their body in front of it. You know, Yetman's got the stick up, down, his legs going, everything, and you got Cullum doing the same thing in Maxwell. So when you're trying to move the puck out of the zone when they're coming in, you better be sure, and I think you better be firing it as hard as you can to get it out. Here's Brad Sims off a faceoff. His shot goes right through the goal crease, low on that glove side and off the end boards and out the other way. But it'll be Charlottetown who, from the neutral zone, will play it right back in again. Here's Kluche. Now to Rio at center ice. Trying to hunt it down. There's going to be Pilon. He can't come up with it. Now it's going to be Voss who is stripped of the puck and right back in again as Sims loads up tight man and this one is denied there by McCluskey. Working wide is going to be Craig Miller. Miller, now he dishes in along the end wall. Yes, now looking to bring it in front. Oh, and a save made by Kluski as he is going to rob Craig Miller. Rods, what an opportunity in rapier like fashion. It'll be McCluskey who sticks out that catching glove to rob Craig Miller. That should have been the second goal of the hockey game. No doubt as the Abbeys beat the uh, Hawks to the puck and sent it right out in front. It is a nice glove save. Miller went high where you're supposed to, but McCluskey comes up with probably the game. In front so now, the puck is going to be there, Rodge, as it goes right to the lip of the goal crease as Hawksbury tries to come back with their own scoring opportunity, but what a game-saving stop there by goaltender Derek McCluskey as Craig Miller goes in, got the puck shot where he wanted it, but uh, McCluskey, as we say, in just great reflex reaction, will get the catching glove a piece of it on it to deny that opportunity. Well, it is, and a uh, huge save as well, and as the Abbeys again, a two-on-one, the shot taken by Sims with that to the four two-on-ones, and really that's where the neutral zone turnovers have hurt the Hawks, very Hawks. They haven't scored on all of my of the Abbeys, but the more chances you get, you know, the more chances the puck is going to get to go between the pipes. But again, McClotsky, he's been able to keep his team in this hockey game when called upon. Shots are now 24-21 in favor of the Abbeys. You remember at one time it was a 12-4 shot advantage in this period. The Eddies have come right back here and have narrowed that to over 12-8. So it remains 1-0. Charlottetown continue to lead 5-0-4 here. Left in the second period. And we've had some nice goaltending saves. Now a shot again to the edge of the crease and trying to position at home is Gibbons, but he just couldn't get the stick on it. And it'll be Hawksbury with their best pressure. Perhaps to the hockey game coming about right now. As it'll be Gibbons in front looking for Baker and the quick release never does get to his stick as they'll be sent back uh, inside the Hawksbury blue line with the Abbeys trying to steal in the offensive blue line. But it'll be Kluche looking for Corey Baker. Baker now takes a high hit, but he will dump it in. Here's Cairn. we got Baker and Rice. They jaw up with one another as it's drifted towards the goal. Players got the stick on the bench here, and let's see. The coach has got Brad Rice's stick and has thrown it down into the back part of the bench now. As the coach doesn't like, he thought that Rice should have been given a charging penalty. The coach took Brad Rice's stick. He threw it at the trainer. Watch him picking it up now. They, they're going to they're keep, <laughs> keeping it on the bench as they have Rice's stick. 
And now, if Mike Kennedy's saying to William Hubbard, get over there and get that stick. So the coach wasn't happy. Now, the players wouldn't let the stick go, if you notice on the bench. And then the coach grabbed the stick and hauled it out of Rice's hand. <laughs> and Brad Rice, he goes right into the, to the marsh there, looking for some trouble there. And he certainly, he's a hunter and all. Right, you got to like the hunters that go right where the rhinos are. There's no <laughs> question. He went right in. <laughs> he was all stuff. <laughs> So Rice, uh, and he, again, he plays the same way at the Civic Center as he does on the road. So, so Baker goes, and Rice as well. I was really rough here, and you know, yep, sons of well earned two minute penalties for, for each one. They're lucky that they didn't perhaps pick up double minors for roughing, but nevertheless, the two minutes each picked. Uh, and assessed by both by both players. Rice is still looking for his stick. Well, we know where the stick is. Now, Forby yells over to Brad Rice and says, sit down. And referee Norman Beck is going to come over now, maybe to ask for the stick, is he? Now, the coach is saying he doesn't know where it's at. The, they know where the stick is. It, they, it's gone now around the other quarter as... That won't be a major issue, I wouldn't think. It's not that Brad Rice doesn't have another hockey stick, and he, the game is not going to be called because of one stick gone. But they've got it now. A spider, as nickname, is uh, one of the. He's got he's got the stick. The stick has been returned. Everything's back to normal. So off a faceoff is going to be drawn back to the blue line. Here's a shot, and it misses the goal wide on the uh, blocker side of goaltender Karen. As Hawksbury now they. Will work the uh, outskirts of the play in back in front. Shot this one off the stick of Roulette. A nice reaction reflex save there by goaltender Karen. It's going to be spun around the boards again as it's Ontario starting to get a little edge to their game here in the second period. As this second period winds down. Gaze trying to pack himself in foot. There's a shot right to the goal. And this one is stopped by Karen's again. Here's Kluche. With Ulex along the backboard. They can't get into the puck. It's sent back through center ice to Yetman to Maxwell. Here's Yetman. Let's see here. Yetman now is going to get it. Yetman looks to try to send it in for one timer there. And this one is going to be finally settled on the stick of the Hawksbury Hawks who will look to hook it off the boards and they do the center ice. And a nice opportunity there for Yetman and Maxwell. They toss it around back and forth pretty good. Yetman, he can't hunt it down. Eventually, Sims finds a lane open. He cruises in over the line. Yetman now tries to drive to the goal off the left lane, but it'll slide right to goaltender Garrick McCluskey, who will hold on to make the save, and he will cover up on it. Scoreboard hasn't changed much, Rod. one nothing since the opening whistle of period number one. The only goal of a hockey game off the stick of number 13, Randy Taylor. That's the difference right now, but we've seen an awful lot more scoring opportunities here over the last five to seven minutes. Well, the Hawks, very Hawks, have had a good second period. No question, as they had more shots and more good scoring chances. Heavies have had just as many good scoring chances, and a one nothing game to this point doesn't surprise a lot of people, I don't think, in a, in a game of this uh, magnitude. It's going to be loose in back of goaltender McCluskey. Now the puck does pop free. Here's an opportunity for Taylor again. But it doesn't get to the goal this time. And let's see what we've got here. Gloves ahead, says referee Norm Beck. So well, this will create uh, the stoppage in play. Three minutes even left here in the middle frame. No scoring here in this second period. The only goal again off the stick of Randy Taylor in this Red Page Cup final winner. Declared the Eastern Canadian Junior A champion and, of course, will find themselves in the Royal Bank Cup in Yorkton, Saskatchewan, beginning next weekend. Well, they got a $5,000 pot divided by two, George. Not bad so far. It's going to be taken back now by Benoit. Benoit up the left corridor. He will play it in. Here's McCadam trying to rim it around. St. John's three tipped in front. This one. Now the Hawks can't get to it. Here's Benoit. He plays it to the hash marks. Left side. Now the puck is going to be poked free. Back to the big circle at center right. St. John looking for Voss. Voss. He in turn now just skips it right back in again. As McCadam will back it up in back of his own goaltender. Looking for David Ambler. Back to McCadam. McCadam now again working the far corner. He's going to lug it now to his own blue line as the ice opens up. Tries to hit Miller on the fly. Picked off there by Benoit. 
He will send it back in again. As we've got Cairns trying to knife it around the board. It'll be Hawksbury taking control. They in turn try to scoop it the other way. Now looking to be hit there is Zayu as he will clear it in, but he certainly was uh, knocked out of the play as it comes cleared in by the Hawksbury Hawks. Abbey turned it back cautiously. They will tear it off the glass and it'll slide back down the other way with right for Hawksbury taking control. Hawks down one nothing here. Through center ice now. The Daze, the quick one timer almost sprung let open. Here's Ouellette uh, trying to set it off in front. A friend here was there along with Daze, but neither one will get the lumber on it. And it'll be Charlottetown and Ben Metzger leading it back through center. Craig Miller, he stapled up against the board. Trying to drag it back in again is Matthew Ouellette. He goes with a lateral pass and ends up outside the blue line again. And it'll be Grant McPherson who will uh, spank it off the board to the uh, Hawksbury side of center ice. As we've got Miller eventually now fighting off a check with Joey Nealon across the Miller. No, that pass is incomplete. Now here's White. He looks, looks to let it go in this one. He is going to be stopped in front as well. Whipped around the boards as we've got Wright taking control. Right for the Hawks to his own blue line. And that pass is going to be picked off by Willie Hublu. Hublu tries to strong arm his way across the line. Dalze in to help out. Puck is still loose. Cousineau can't come up with it. Here's Sims now. He loses control. And a foot race back the other way. Ouellette in across the line. Tries to find Cousineau. Ouellette is going to be up then. It's Cousineau runs his man in the corner. Ouellette in to help out. Now the puck is worked free. Back to the flash to the blue line. St. Joe. Right. He lets it go. And it's going to be right as the catching glove. Out goes into Mark Cairns. We have left the minute to play here in period number 230, 4.1 seconds in a one nothing Abbey hockey game. Well, did uh, Brad Sims ever recover nice in that rush as he uh, kind of has the puck bounce off the forward coming at him at the blue line, so he has to chase him all the way down the ice. He does, knocks the puck away, gets up and nails him into the boards and takes the other guy, so then he's looking around and saying, okay, somebody's got to help me here right now. I'm just about out of, out of gas. But re real good recovery, and that's the key to hockey players, when you get that effort, he's been a real good addition. Oh, very good addition, but when you get the second and third effort, that means you're ready to play, and he certainly is showing that here throughout the Fred Page Cup. So it's one nothing, Charlottetown, 34.1 seconds left in the second period. Uh, Hawks in the offensive zone can't win the draw. Now it'll be Eric Express back to center ice. Here's Yetman trying to scoot in across the line. Yetman tries to find somebody to tailgate the play. He's going to be upended. St. John tries to bank it out. It does come loose to center ice. And the Hawks try to chase after it. Now they look to join the play into the neutral zone. Here's LeBeaumont. He will drive it in. And it'll go deep in the play. Baker. Baker deep now and off the end board. And he will lose control. Then tries to hunt the puck down again. It's going to be popped off the end wall back the other way. That's going to be it for period number two. No scoring in that second period. Only one goal in the hockey game. That one. Coming in the first period off the Abbey stick of Randy Taylor. That's it scoring-wise here in this East, Eastern Canadian Junior A Hockey Championship. The Fred Page Cup. Again, the Abbey's lead after 40 minutes of play, 1-0. We'll be back with the second period intermission in just a moment. This is the Fred Page Cup at All-Hit Country 1240 CJRW. And as well, the Ad Channel Island-wide. Channel 8 here in Charlottetown, 16 in Summerside. Scrap metals limited specializing in industrial accounts all across Prince Edward Island and the Maritime. You receive competitive pricing for all your scrap metals, including copper, brass, aluminum, stainless steel, converters, and batteries. Container service is also available at AS Scrap Metal Limited. Visit our contact Alan yeah. or Rick Stewart today at 902 361 located. Here is the fans get up and give them a standing ovation. Hey, you know, it will give us an opportunity, as we have mentioned throughout the, the broadcast, that the fan support has been phenomenal for the Abbey here throughout the Fed Page Cup, throughout the playoffs, and as well the people who are unable to make it to the rink that have listened on CJRW through uh, the Island Cable uh, system through Island TV Edge, Island Wide Channel 8, Channel Town, Channel 16, and Summerside, and we certainly appreciate the people that are listening. And we should, right now we want to take this opportunity. We have someone listening in Toronto, Ontario, via the phone, uh, on a karaoke machine, of course, it's Alan Stewart's mom, Jean. Well, Jean, Al says hi, 20 minutes to go, and uh, hopefully you'll be able to enjoy the 20 minutes as much as he will, and we appreciate you listening, Jean, and, 
And we know there's a lot of people cheering for your son and his team, and uh, there's 20 minutes to decide it. So, Gene, and for the, the broadcast faith. team as well, Ross, well, say hello to her as well. That's right. And keep the faith, keep the fingers crossed, and remember the Bruins are doing okay too. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Val, George's mother listening in Toronto, so her son's hockey club is up by the score of one to nothing as we enter period number three of the Fred Page Cup Final here in Charlottetown. And the Abbeys over the Hawksbury Hawks, one nothing. They will scoop it in. Hawks have to chase in after it. Voss in off the end board. Now looking to control the flesh deep inside his own territory as Hawksbury starts it backing over the line. Here's Gibbons splitting to the fifth, goes in. Oh, and he lets it go, and this one misses wide. Low on that glove side, and Yetman now routes it back and looks to try to lead it ahead. It's going to be stolen by Baker by one, down low, in off, in back of the goal. Baker tries to spin it around, and he will lose control as Yetman brings it back. Oh, Yetman, he smoked just inside the neutral zone area as he roamed outside of his own blue line. But the Abbeys will clear it in. It's loose down to the side of the goal. In back of the goal, here's Yetman. Yetman in front shot. Big big puck is in the score! No goal. Abbeys. No goal. No goal. They're waving it off. Because goaltender McCloskey had the puck underneath him. And I think uh, Norman Beck is going to say either that he thought the puck was covered and the whistle had gone, or that there might have been someone in the crease. But uh, whistle... He says the whistle is gone, so that will not be a goal, but George... Oh, Whoa, there. Raj, I tell you, the puck was right there, uh, right between the pads of goaltender McCluskey. Referee Beck loses sight of it and immediately blows the play down, and as a result, then, uh, it is no goal. Scoreboard remains still 1-0 Charlottetown over Hawkesbury, Ontario. It'll be Hablo with a face-off circle to the right of uh, goaltender Derek McCluskey. On the draw is Ouellette, Matthew Ouellette for Hawkesbury. It'll be won by Charlottetown. Back to the left point. The Sims is driving to the goal. This one is going to be sheared aside by Derek McCluskey. It'll be Hawksbury trying to whip it around the board. It's going to be controlled by the Hawks deep inside their own territory. They can't clear it out. Here's White stepping in. Up top he goes. And this one is up over the crossbar. As the Abbeys look uh, to press for the second goal and to widen their lead for that opportunity. It will be Hawksbury deep inside their own territory. It will be Lafreniere up on the right side. He works it now to the checkered red line, and he continues to cruise in over the line. Lafreniere, he's up into Gaze, continues to route the puck in back of the goal. He's stapled up against the boards, and here comes Willie Hublu. Hublu up on the right side to Miller. Miller now through center ice to White. Here's White now. Cradles the puck, loads it up right to the goal. He'll go with it up from 100 feet. An easy save there for McCluskey to make. It's St. John. Now he will allow the puck to be cleared outside of his own blue line. Now starting back, Hawksbury trying to go now to the offense, cruises in over the line. Here's Baker, tough angle, stick handles, lets it go. This one stops by goaltender Karen, pinching in his cluche right to the net. He goes with it, but down on all fours. It's going to be goaltender Mark Karen to snuff out that opportunity, and he'll hold on to force a stoppage in play. Rods, the game hasn't had the tempo that you might have uh, or might think it might have, uh, considering the uh, the importance of the game at times, but uh, the last seven or eight minutes of that period two and opening up period number three, we've got a pretty good flow. Well, you know, the message, message to the coach uh, benches would be similar from their coaches. This is your last opportunity, maybe. Will you go for it? When you get a chance to go to the offense, make sure you pick the shot. Make sure you finish your check in the defensive zone. You block shots. You do what it can to get it out. And you should get the best 20 minutes right here from your club, no matter who you're talking about. From the faceoff, Yetman, he will uh, slide the puck out to center ice, or routing it right back in again as Corey Baker, he's stuffed up against the boards, and let's see, we've got something uh, displaced along the boards here, it looks like, but uh, that forces the play to come to a halt. The gate opened right down below us here, so that's uh, why the whistle does go, but George, uh, you know, we talked about uh, people getting caught up in it, and we, we're on Prince Edward Island. All of us are very proud of what takes place on Prince Edward Island, no matter what the event, no matter where it is, and, and the support that it gets. And uh, again, this is, uh, I guess, uh, symbolizes this crowd, a fellow crowd on a Sunday afternoon, probably close to 4,000 people here, uh, you know, supporting the Prince Edward Island team and hoping that they're able to go on. And uh, that, uh, that's one thing that I really enjoy the most about being involved in sport. You're right. Here's right now off the drive, off that right point. This one. He is going to be stopped. Now Yetman tries to take it deep inside his own ice. And he's going to be upended on the play. Lafreniere, now it's been in front. Ouellette tries to one-time it and fans on it. 
Now starting back on the reverse. Here's Telemann across the line, trying to drop it. Here's McWilliams. He scores! Who does it? Well, Ryan Maxwell, it's a nice drop pass for from Pelham, but it's a three on two. And again, when you get that set up this time, he makes no mistake. He risks it, and George Battis stick side on a goaltender who's a left right-handed goalie makes just a little difference. Maybe it took Ryan a little opportunity to realize the glove is on the other hand, but a nice shot of giving the Andes a 2 nothing lead. So the Andes score a big, big goal. Here's Sims who drives it in. McCluskey will cover up to hold on. But, uh, you know, Rod, you, you talk about uh, just moments ago before that second goal of a hockey game and both of them going to the Abbeys, but certainly the uh, the effort put forth by the Abbeys this year, not only good for not only good for the Charlottetown Abbeys Hockey Club, but also for it's good for junior hockey on PEI, Roger. Well, it gets everybody excited and knows that uh, there's an opportunity there when all the right things are put into place and comes right from the top. Off the draw, it's going to be worked on, and it does come loose, and Ambler tries to free it up, and it'll be gloved ahead, so we've got play resuming. Again, inside the Hawksbury zone, 2-0 now, Abby's leading it. Off that to second goal by Ryan Maxwell. He will kiss the twines on that blocker side. Off goaltender Derek McCluskey about knee high. And that's the lead the Abbeys want. They're up by two. And he's got a good wrist shot. As we've seen, he can get it away. And I think a lot of goaltenders don't expect it to be as hard when he doesn't look like he's teeing it up. Here comes now Baker. He will angle it off a skate towards goaltender Cairns, who's on all fours to hold on to make the save. But Cairns will cover up on it to hold on. And that'll create the stop. He can play inside the Abbey zone this time. And we've played uh, two minutes and uh, 55 seconds of this third period. Hawksbury yet to hit the score sheet. Abbey's with two. Ryan Maxwell, his fifth of the Fred Page Cup at 224. Chris Tellum and Ben Metzger will pick up the assist. It's too much for the Abbey's here with now 17.04 to go in this third period. Ben Metzger looks for a hublu. The white, white now tries to position the puck in his stick. He can't break it in over the line. Miller, he'll continue on. He'll dump it in back of the Hawksbury net. Hawks now set it up through center ice. Gibbons can't come up with it. Now joining the play is going to be Corey Baker. Baker, he is going to be worked off the puck. It will be Charlottetown tapping it around to Miller. Miller doesn't get it out. And it will be flipped back in again. Well, we've got Sims. Retaking control. He hooks it around the board. It'll be picked off the far right board by Charlottetown as they will lay it back to center ice. Here's right for Hawksbury, Ontario. He crosses center ice and dumps it in. Cairns will intercept in back of his own goal. He sends it around the rail looking for Miller. He's going to be checked up against the board. Here's Miller continuing to try to advance on it. But uh, they will freeze frame the puck up there outside the Charlottetown blue line. And you know, Roger, a guy that you got to like is number five, Corey Baker. He's looked pretty good in this tournament. Well, he was the leading point getter going into uh, Friday night's game. And he had a chance of winning that scoring trophy. But, uh, of course, Yetman, Maxwell, and Pelham all passed him. But he has. You remember, he tried out with the Abbeys in the first Started part of the, of the season. And, uh, you know, we were uh, our surprise. Uh, there's some other players that have moved around from the Maritime League up to there. Sebastian Y, I told you, that played right. with Restigus, uh, ended up with Valley Field. So there's some movement of players here in this Fred Page Cup division, basically. Central Ontario. It'll be driven in Quebec and uh, the Maritime region. As we've got McAdam, who oh, will take control. McAdam looks to... Play it up top. That pass is beyond Yetman, so icing will be the call against the Charlottetown Abbeys. 15-37 left here in the third period. And it's 2-0 Abbey over Hawksbury, Ontario Hawks. Well, the old story, if you're the Abbeys, there's too much time left in this hockey game. And if you're Hawksbury, it's picking away those seconds almost are like two at a time instead of one at a time. 
Still lots of time, as you know, if Hawksbury is able to get one, it's uh, quite a different thing. Momentum will shift, but the Abbeys look a little uh, nervous just for 30 seconds until they start the period, Georgia. Then they get out and get their first opportunity, and bingo, they get the goal. That's a big goal in this hockey game without question. As St. John, his pass is going to be misdirected, so it'll come back on the icing call to the right of goaltender Derek McCluskey, who was beaten once in the first period. And in the early stages here of period number three, playing better than I anticipated that he would, Rog, as far as at least seeing him going into last night's action. He uh, didn't look good after the four periods that I saw him play, but he played two solid ones and has played uh, two plus a few minutes here in tonight's, or rather this afternoon's game as well. well. He's made some good saves. He really has uh, key saves to keep the score to nothing. And uh, that's the proper description, key save for goaltender Derek McCluskey. However, he has been beaten twice, and that's the difference in the hockey game. As now stepping in is St. John trying to uh, direct it towards the goal. He'll chop at it. He'll send it uh, off the edge and in back of the net uh, with the Abbey's Brad Rice looking to send uh, McGowan away. McGowan muscles to the blue line, and it'll be fired in by Randy Taylor. And it'll be Hotsbury regrouping. Cousineau at his own blue line. He can't uh, trap the puck in his stick. It'll be fired back in again. Kluche tries to shake a check, stops at the puck, plays it up off the far board, and starting back, looking to take control, is Lafreniere for the Hawks, but he can't get to the puck in time, and Kluche starts it to St. John inside his own territory. To Lafreniere, he will dump it into the long corner to the right of goaltender Mark Cairns. And a, sort of a bad angle shot there, doesn't get to the net. Off the right point, here's right drive. this one, deflects it, now for the cross in front, standing there's Lafreniere. Uh, it looks like Metzger got a piece of the tape on it, just to take it away from a, a hot player and a scoring opportunity. Here comes Willie Hublu right back in again. Here's Hublu, rise now to fight off that check, as Gaze, he will rake the puck free. It's going to be right inside his own ice, right up the right aisle, banks it off the boards to center ice. Abbey's on their side of center, cross. They will now, and Sims fires it right back in again. Into the right corner. It'll be spun around the boards as it'll be Hawksbury will play it back to center ice again. Sims drives it right back in again off the end netting. And this will create the stoppage in play and the faceoff. As a result, will come in the neutral zone. 13.35 left here in period number three, Raj. And uh, time is winding down for the Hawks. But there's too much time, as you indicated, for the Charlottetown Abbey. Well, you're right. And uh, with the Abbey, their game plan, as it has been most suits to this Fed Page Cup defensively, make sure you get it out of the zone. Now you got the two-goal lead. You don't leave the zone until you get it out. Then when you get over center, unless you got a real nice opportunity, get it in and go to one 2, two. It seems to be what is working well for them right now. Here's right now. He will elude a check. Sends the puck to the doorstep. And goaltender Mark Karen. And then Charlottetown will just lift it out, only to have it hammered back in again by the Hawksbury Hawks. Here comes Yetman. Yetman tries to step aside a check at center ice. Puck is dragged in on over the Hawksbury line and scooped out by Hawksbury. And tossed right back in again by Charlottetown and fired right back out again by Hawksbury. As the Hawks will start it back. Here comes Wright. He will brush by a check. Looks to work it across the line. Joining the play is Rio. He will have the puck taken away from him. As we've got Nick McGowan at center right. He drives it into the catching glove of old tender Derek McCluskey. As Ontario tries to bring it up on the near side. They cannot uh, work it past the hash mark. It's going to be Benoit for Hawksbury. He'll roam in back of his own goal. Continues to cradle the puck. Gets a relay pass from Debemont. And it'll be back to Benoit. It will be Benoit by one. Tries to go by another one before it's given away. Here's uh, Ben Metzger right back in again now. He'll fire it in. As he will fire it in and around in back of the goal. Debemont tries to dump it out. St. John there as well. Here's Miller. He will intercept it and plays it into the far corner again. The left of... Goaltender Derek McCluskey. Abbey's looking to press here, trying to keep it in. 
They're cutting everything off at center ice and in turn now just laid it back in again. This time Miller caught in and as a result, the offside will go against the Charlotte Town Abbeys. But Roger, you indicated uh, they pressed pretty good and not an awful lot of open in that neutral zone. No, they're doing a good job. And what they're also doing is running time off the clock. They had a flow going. As soon as they got the puck, they're putting it in, but you put one guy pressuring the puck carrier, the other two guys are in the neutral zone ready to pick up the guy that the puck is going to or drive to the puck carrier if he happens to get by. And the defense for the Evans is standing up at center so that there's not that space. A lot of teams like to lay it back, stand up if you get it, just jump it right back in. Evans don't have to score another goal in this hockey game as long as they don't give up any, you know. That's all you got to look at. It's going to be gunned in off the stick of Voss. And now Baker tries to feed it in front. Here's Gibbons. He tries to work off a couple of checks, then puts the grab on his man. Well, flesh in, and neither one can come up with it. As controlling there is Brad Rice before he's ripped up against the boards. Voss tried to keep it in off the right point. White can't get it out. Now it's with it towards the goal deflected in front off of Rice. And just off of his shoulder, it goes wide of the target. Baker trying to keep it in, but he gets the glove on it and drops it down. So the play is going to be whistled down. But to the Hawksbury Hawks, down by the score of 2 nothing, has to get a goal here to get back into this one. 11.07 left in the third period of the Fred Page Cup. The final game, the winner to be declared the Eastern Canadian Junior A champion. And the Abbeys are looking to accomplish that here this afternoon. Well, it's George's uh, special birthday. Uh, Don Ahern, uh, my son Chris's uh, wife. It's oh, her yes. birthday today, so I'd like to wish her a happy birthday. and hope she's enjoying her day from myself and Diane. Well, I'd like to pass that on as well. I do know Don. You Roger. do. That's right. So she's, uh, I won't say how old she is. That's not very nice to say that. But oh, yeah. <laughs> now you say that after you, well, yeah, after you yeah, give it George, to me about two weeks ago. Once you get into the 50 bracket, it's okay. <laughs> oh, all right. Gee whiz. <laughs> well, I had one. Uh, anyway. That's okay, Raj. What goes around comes around someday. So well, I you figure, you can't I figure get, watch your back. You can't get me for the 50, George. I mean, I passed the 50, all right? And I've, I've blazed a uh, path for you. Yep. And I knew you followed through real quick. Yes. And as they say, you followed in the wake, George. Uh, and you look good for a guy that's 52. I'm really <laughs> yeah, impressed. Yeah. I'll tell you what, Raj. I don't care. You watch your back. Now here comes uh, uh, the Hawks again to the goal. It's going to be... Off the uh, catching glove, and then it'll be the Abbey starting it back. It'll be Tellum looking for Maxwell. Maxwell with across the line, and he's going to be worked off the puck. Now is Hawksbury's right. He looks far side to Matthew Ouellette to uh, Lafreniere through center ice, and back on the stick of Daze. Daze tries to drive to the goal. Backhand shot, this one it is going to be stopped there by old center Mark Cairns, and Cairns down, doesn't give up the rebound. And as a result, uh, he will hold on. So, John, we won't give Don's age, Rod, that's for sure. But uh, as I say, watch out. George, I've been around you enough to know that I have the, uh, the what they call the deflector shield on for <laughs> anything that may come. But no matter what it is, it'll be coming up at me. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> oh, my, oh, my. And by the way, you look sharp today, George. Oh, thanks, Rod. Just when you, you thought there might be Something some overtime. Coming to, I'm going to cut you off right now. <laughs> Devil Ma, he is going to uh, pick it up inside his own blue line. And it'll be LaFleche off that far alley. He goes now wing to wing, and he looks for a man open. That's Kluche. Back the other way, LaFleche. And the pass over two lines. And that'll create the side they can play for Hawksbury Rodge. They've got to they've get something generated here. They've had uh, more scoring opportunities over the last 20 minutes of play than I think uh, perhaps over the first 30 minutes of action here of this hockey game, but they have yet to, to beat goaltender Mark Cairns, and uh, it's, due to, it's really due time for them, or uh, they're not going to get uh, the job done here this afternoon. So uh, They're a little upset that but that call, a two-line pass, uh, but when you're down 2 nothing, you're looking for some things. Uh, instead of uh, doing a little bit of that uh, complaining, maybe get it worked just a little harder is what happens here. Now starting back is Gibbons and Baker. Baker has a roll off of his stick. Trying to step in now to join the play as Cloutier. Puck pops loose to center ice. Benoit, he tries to drive it back in again. Stands on it, but does get the job done. As we've got McGowan, who starts now to uh, route the play back the other way. It's going to be fired into that right wing corner. And it'll be controlled by the Hawks before they will give it up. Here's Maxwell, who's got a big goal in the hockey game. His pass 
is going to be incomplete. Benoit in back of the goal, cycles with the puck. Benoit up the far side now. Benoit continuing to smart handle it, plays it to, into the corner of the blocker side of Cairns. Cairns now tries to wind it around the other way, and it'll be sent out to center ice. St. John in turn now just will uh, toss the puck right back in again. It'll be sent back to center right. Yetman now, ooh, he is uh, checked pretty good there by Wright. As the puck now will come loose, and Yetman, Raj, you and I could uh, hear that one up here now. Wright and, uh, whoops, uh, that's Chris Pelham that uh, takes a couple of jabs around the jaw area from Wright. So Wright's a little frustrated, and uh, he gets Yetman up high with a hit. But Yetman looks to be okay. Well, Yetman was going for the puck and did take a bit of an elbow. No penalties called here. And uh, again, Norman Beck, usually in a third period like this, unless it's a blatant call, will not uh, put the position of the game to be won because an of a call or, from yeah, him. An injury or uh, scoring, chance. scoring scoring chances are usually the types of calls that you get. 850, so sorry, George, 850 to go and 2 nothing. you're right, and it's going to have to be a blatant uh, uh, foul for him to call it. And he's for both it. teams. I'm sure they both, I know you're, you're thinking some things, but you just can't call just a little penalty here. It's got to be really something that is, is going to cause a, a problem. Here's yeah, St. John now. He lets it go and it drifts wide on the far side of the target. Trying to keep it in his right. Places the puck between the rings in front. Does a, he's being worked on. Does a off the right corner he can't maintain control of it and it's going to be towered the other way by charlottetown as we've got a right regrouping here's right for hawksbury to the side of his own goal up on the near board lafreniere through center ice eventually to st john who mishandles it lafreniere now tries to power his way onto the loose disc at center ice and it'll be fired back into the corner to the left of goaltender karen abby they try to start the play back the other way here's white looking for miller that pass is beyond his reach. And starting back will be Hawksbury, and they will be led by Kluche. He fires it uh, into the corner to the left of goaltender Karen. It pops loose now on the side of the goal. Trying to hunt after it is Rio. He is going to uh, try to uh, lock up his man, plus uh, work the puck free. But uh, he can't get the job done as it'll be frozen as it looks like uh, possibly White and Rio. They will talk it up with one another, but both will go their way now. And uh, this will create the stoppage and play with play still inside the Abbey zone. 7.34 left here in the third period. Abbey's with a goal in the first and an early goal here in the second period, or rather third period. And that is the scoring, no scoring in period number two. Well, it's right now, Randy Taylor's goal in the first period at 7.11 is the winning marker if Wouldn't the that score be stays the same. And I guess uh, you would say that, wouldn't you, yeah. <laughs> for Randy Taylor? Yes, the score remains the same. It'll be a face-off to the left of Karen. Abby holding on to the 2 nothing lead. Looking to bring another championship back to PEI. They've got a long old time yet before this one's over. Everybody in the rink knows it. And Voss takes control, then gives it up, gets it back again. Voss starts it back now on the wide side, tries to play it up on the far side. The Abbeys will pick it off and then lug it back in again, but offside will be Charlottetown and Ryan Maxwell talking it up with the coaching staff of the Hawksbury Hawks. And Hawksbury down by the score of two to nothing. Perhaps should re remain focused on the task on hand right. Probably talk more to your players. Get them going. Uh, no sense talking to the players in the other team. <laughs> Ryan Maxwell, uh, something must have been said when he fell down in front of the bench, you know. And uh, if I was Ryan Maxwell, I'd just look over and say, uh, I, I got, got one. Scoreboard. I got one. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, there's quite a few yeah. <laughs> in this series. But yeah, he's an all-star in this tournament. That's right. It's uh, going to be a face-off on the Hawksbury side of center right. Ambler now fends off a check and plays it in. Devilmont for Ontario. Lafreniere outside of his own blue line. And hit to Ouellette with it. Now it'll be fired back in again by the Hawksbury Hawks. Alley's deep inside their own blue line. Here's Sims. He tries to hook it around, trying to keep it in. Nope, Hawks can't get it done. 
and St. John will back it up to his own blue line. Leads it up ice. Tries to dish off to Ulat to Daze. Daze, he's shoulder, but Lafreniere joins the attack, letting it go from a pretty tight angle. High off the right circle, but it's easily off the glove of goaltender Mark Cairns. And back now the Abbey start. Here's Metzger. He cruises in over the line to Nick McGowan. McGowan, I level, he lets it go. And it's up over the crossbar and beyond goaltender Derek McCluskey as Hawksbury regroups. Here they come up the right side. St. John tries to clear it in, but fans on the first opportunity and then uh, does get the job done, but it'll be an offside call against the Hawksbury Hawks with 6 11 left here in the third period. Abbey's up by the score of 2 to nothing. They've got a goal in the first and the third. We're shut out in the second. And that's the hockey game scoring line. 32, uh, 33 32 of the shots on goal in favor of Hawksbury. And uh, right now, time is a major factor in this one, especially for Hawksbury. It'll be chipped in by McAdam. In and around off the right wing corner. The Abbeys try to charge in after it. Miller tries to tie up his man. Gibbons now forcing the issue the other way to LaFleche. Looking for Baker. And now stepping in is going to be Wright. Wright gets it just inside the blue line. Now it's going to be directed towards the goal, but onto the stick of Miller. And Miller quickly and softly now just slides it back down the other way. And icing will be the call against the Charlottetown Abbeys. And the faceoff coming back inside their blue line. Goal, goal scores in the hockey game. We've got Randy Taylor in the first period. His first of this series. And Ryan Maxwell with his fifth off the series as well. Putting up the second goal of the hockey game. Well, certainly uh, it's, it's been a game where at times you thought perhaps Hawksbury might be able to cash one in. But goaltender Karen made some key saves, George. Uh, and there wasn't a lot of pressure shots that were on. But he made some saves. Got himself in the game early with those long shots, if you know what I mean. You remember he was bouncing around a little bit, feeling them on the trapper and so on. So that was a big key for him. Here's Maxwell again now. From high off the right wing, he'll direct it towards the goal. Easily directed to a side of the goal by McCluskey. As Hotsbury will have to back it up. They look for Lafreniere, and he will give it away. Tell him he'll just pitch it in back of the goal. Cluche, quick pass to right, right off the... Right corridor back to Lafreniere through center ice. He is going to be stripped of the puck, and it'll be sent right back in again by the Abbey. Boy, lots of white jerseys in the neutral zone. Well, you got to play right now. You just got to one guy in and have your four guys, two and two, ready to go pick up the first man with the puck and get it in over center. I tell you, unless you got the skills of Wayne Gretzky, it's pretty tough to work your way through there, Rod. Well, you know it is, and uh, for Hawksbury, they just haven't been able to muster much here. They're just doing a nice job of smothering them right now. Here's Voss stepping back in, tries to drive through the defense, and Cairns are wandering. He'll just uh, cue it off the board. Here's LaFleche now letting it go. Oh, that one might have been to the far side. Cairns didn't look to be centered on it. He had a reach for it, but he'll make the glove save and hold on. And the coach, Roger, I heard, Rog, this neutral zone trap, what do you do? Dump it in and try to... you got to get some speed. What you do is you're coming around. If you're carrying the puck out, you got to get a guy coming from behind on the board, feed it to him fast and try to get it. Or if you step over the center and dump it in, somebody's got to be moving. You know, you can't all be going. you got to get some pressure. Fired in on one side and you're going in on the other. The size factor, Raj, Ontario hasn't taken advantage of it. No, they haven't, and they haven't, you know, but they, the Abbeys haven't allowed them to get in and lay the body on it because they're, getting the, they're winning the draws, they're getting the puck out when it's uh, required. Like, I think uh, Craig Miller's done a nice job in the wing here the last five minutes or so, just taking the puck and just getting it out, taking the hit, but making sure you get it out. Very unselfish, and that's what you have to be, especially in your own zone. 420 left here in the third period. It will be lifted back the other way, and it'll roll all the way down inside the Hawksbury zone over the goal line for an icing call. And uh, the faceoff again will have to take place back inside the Abbey Blue line to the right of goaltender Mark Karen. 4-11 left in regulation time. Hawksbury yet to get a goal in the hockey game, trailing 2-0. Of course, you got to think... Uh, goaltender-wise, maybe three minutes left, two minutes left, to probably close to two minutes left if you're going to pull the goaltender if the score stays the same and try to get something going, but they're really pressuring right now. Now it comes out short side. Where's the puck? It's right to the goal line. Goaltender Cairns is down, and they can't beat him as the Hawks try to get the first goal of the game for Hawksbury, but Cairns somehow denies that opportunity. 
Well, it's a nice job of bringing the puck out from behind the net. Karen's just down the first shot. Almost looked like it got behind him. I think Brad Rice went into the net to make sure it wouldn't go in over the goal line. But Karen's had it all the time. So Forby says, uh, that scared me. I'm going to take change the line. Forby right now, he's not taking any chances. Everything's going uh, not his way. Change the line. Here's a shot now directed towards the goal. Here's Ouellette, tries to send it in, foot, short side, puck is there, and the Addies finally get it, and back they come. Through center right, tell him on the fly now, tries to cruise to the line, he is stepping by Voss. Here's Maxwell who drives it back in again, and he will have goaltender McCluskey, who will stop it. Back comes Ouellette through center right, tries to play it up right. This one, Cairns now gives it away on the clear end. Jose tries to charge in after, in back of the goal is Rio, who's been silent this game. He's going to be belted up against the board. Back comes Yetman and Maxwell in a two-on-two. Two. And, and Maxwell will fire it in, waiting for Yetman to clear out. And Debamont now up on that far side. He looks for Rio again. And uh, he can't make any headway with it. Now here, loading up. There's the drive. And this one off the stick of Nick McGowan. It's loose to the side of the goal. Debamont for Hawksbury. Will lead it up on that near side to St. John across the line. Baker now will fire it. It comes loose in back of the goal. Rice tries to wheel it around the Ambler through center ice to McGowan. Now here comes Randy Taylor in across the line with McGowan, sending McGowan to the goal, but this pass is behind him. Nice job done there by uh, no Flesh to try to take control. It's going to be loose now in back of the net, angled off the board, sent back down the other way with 2:35 left. Here in the third period. What's that tell you about the line of Andrew McGowan and, uh, of course, Randy Taylor? Out with two and a half minutes to go. Doing a great job and almost getting another scoring opportunity there with a nice play by Taylor. Hawksbury stepping it up now to the wrong blue line. Kluche, he'll wobble it back in again. Right to Cares, who wants to dump it out. He does. Sends it all the way back down. Right to goaltender McCluskey. Well, they've got to be thinking right now, George, 2.08 to go in this third period. You're down two goals, McCluskey. Somebody better signal towards him to be ready to come to the bench. Luce, he'll flip it back the other way. Ooh, what? He can't step it up. Looking to keep it down is right, but it's knocked down with a high stick. The faceoff will come outside the Charlottetown blue line, 155 left. The crowd now is starting to clap their hands and here on their Charlottetown Abbeys, who are up by the score of 2 0. It's going to be a timeout called here, I think, as the coach is looking to get the attention of his players. He should call it. Uh, 155 to go. Abbeys are that far away from claiming the Fred Page Cup and going undefeated, I might add, during the Fred Page Cup if they're able to do it and hold on to this lead. Not a timeout, uh, I'm surprised. Maritime Junior Hockey League has never won a Fred Page Cup. It's only been around a few short years. Probably, what, the third, fourth year for it? Third or fourth year, that's right. And, uh, you know, when you're able to do that at home ice, it's really nice. Now, this is Forby's opportunity to talk to his players. What he's going to say right now, listen, guys, don't do anything different than what you're doing. You know, just because the net is empty, I don't want you trying to fire the puck in the empty net. Let's play like the net is, is the goalie is in the net. Do the things right. Get the puck over center ice. Then dump it in. If it happens to go in the net, that's fine. We don't need a goal. We just don't need to give up a goal. Because you know a lot of players will think, oh, the net's are open. And you turn around, you want to fire and get the goal. The goal is not what will seal the victory. It's not allowing a goal that will seal the victory. So he's going to make sure right now that you're focused out there. Just do the job. Make sure you're able to get it. But goaltender McCloskey still in the net. I guess they're going to wait till they get it in deep and uh, hopefully be able to draw him towards the blue line. But Abby's right now have played a strong third period, very strong third period, and looking to continue it for another minute and 55 seconds. Face-off coming outside the shallow tableau line, Yetman's line out. With Callum and Maxwell driven in by right. Goaltender McCluskey still on the ice here. And it'll be fired in by the Hawks. And now Hawksbury trying now to loosen the puck free, but it'll be Metzger, and he'll just tap it back outside of his own blue line, right. Takes control. Off the right alley. He in turn now flips it right back in again. Right onto the stick of Ben Metzger. Metzger roams and then wires it off the boards. And looking to get it out is Maxwell. He'll tuck at the center ice. That'll be flipped back in again by St. Jobbett. Into the crowd here. And again, the play being whistled down. And uh, the Abbey's not allowing the Hawksbury Hawks to 
penetrate deep inside the offensive zone right now. And uh, the Hawks are going to have a tough time of it with a 124 left, Raj. They got to get the first one before they can get two. Well, they hit the puck in deeper. They didn't take the goal yet. I'm really surprised. Uh, I thought they'd get some, you know, dump it in, get that extra guy and fire it in. But right now, the Abbey's with the line that has really done a fabulous job for them, along with everybody else. But they're out here right now to try to keep the puck from going in. In the big circle at center ice, St. John hammers it in. This one off the catching glove of Cairn. Rice backs it up, tries to clear it out, kept in by Baker. Baker down to the far side. Now it's ripped out. Now the goaltender doesn't come out as McCluskey wanders on the play, almost gives it away. Now looking to get it is going to be Maxwell. It comes loose. St. John less than a minute to play here in the third period. Abby, 60 seconds away from the Fred Page Cup. Bringing it back with flesh down. In off the far side. He will have his pocket picked and it'll roll right back in again. Abby not allowing the Hawksbury Hawks any room at all. They're working in over the blue line. Here now, right, he's going to lose the battle as the puck is given up. Here's St. John trying to come up with it. He parks it off the boards. The crowd starting to stand here. They cheer on Charlottetown. In across the line. Here's Baker stepping it in. Baker lets it go. Side man. Rebound comes in front. Goaltender's out now. Then it comes in front. Hawksbury trying to whack away at it. This one goes into the corner. Italy Baker trying to feed it in front. It's banked off the boards but kept in. Here's Wright letting it go. Blocked there. Now they put it the other way. This one is going to go back down again. I say will be the call with 8.7 seconds left. The Charlottetown Eddies are going to win the Fred Page Cup. And they are going to win it for Atlantic Canada for the first time. They are going to move on to York and Saskatchewan with the Royal Bank Cup next weekend. And that one will start May the 1st all the way through to the 9th. The Charlottetown Abbeys, they host the Fred Page Cup. And that's an easy way to get here, Raj. But I'll tell you what, they win the league and then they win this tournament. There's nothing more that has to be said about the Charlottetown Abbey. And another thing, George, I don't think it probably ever happened before. A father and son coaching and a brother of uh, the coach as well. Forby and their son Mike and Jamie all were kind of hugging each other there on the side. Tremendous victory for them and for the Charlottetown Abbey as well as... ...from all your favorite names. Formal wear for weddings or prom. Plus all the other accessories to add that final touch, including fragrances and a great selection of fine gift cards. Visit Henderson and Cudmore today in Waterfront Place in Summerside or Confederation Court Mall in Charlottetown. Off for face off. Here's a drive. Now here's another opportunity. Charlottetown as time has wound down and the Charlottetown Abbeys are going to win the Fred Page Cup, the first Fred Page Cup to come to Atlantic Canada and the Abbeys will move on to the Royal Bank Cup out in York and Saskatchewan again May the 1st to May the 9th and as we said just prior to the buzzer sounding Raj, the Charlottetown Abbeys are going in the front door. They're going in the front door and they're taking the express when they go to as they've done it the the hard way by winning everything and not the easy way and by posting a shutout in the championship game what does that tell you that's a complete team effort and something that they talked about from day one when they're putting the pieces of the puzzle together you need a goaltender to start george you need six good defensemen or seven they did that but they added everything else and what they do have as we talked about it starts from the top the guy that uh, you have to give a lot of credit to is alan stewart who is a major factor in this along with Pat Goody, Forby Mike, and 
Jamie and the surrounding cast that all helped out. But boy, what a tribute to them. They went out, they set out to do a job. A lot of people can set out to do a task, but they can't complete it. They've completed all but the final puzzle right now. Here they are on home ice before a sold out crowd and shut out the team that they had to beat to get right here. And they're enjoying the moment very much so. And uh, congratulations to them all. And Gene, your son has done it. And uh, glad you're able to listen to it, Gene. And hopefully that uh, you get a chance to talk to Al, I'm sure, before uh, the next hour has gone by. But Al and the crew have won the Fred Page Cup. So both teams now gathering to the blue line, the Charlottetown Abbeys, who some people counted out a couple of weeks ago, Rog, when they were down against Danny Anish. Thought the Abbeys might be overrated, but boy, they have come back seven straight wins. And the first three of those seven were must. Then they open up this series with three straight, and they win this one. They haven't lost in seven going to the Royal Bank Cup against the best competition that there is in Eastern Canada. Without a doubt, and uh, they answer the bell, and really, you're right, the 3-1 series deficit that they come back from, it, it did focus them into what's going, going on here right now. And I think when you face some adversity, it prepares you for better times ahead or, or worse times ahead, and they were able to bounce back from that uh, deficit and win Game 7, which put them into position to be where they are right now. And uh, really... When you take a look at, at this team, the guys you got to mention, we talk all about the folks that score the goals and do the plays. A guy like a Ben Metzger, we've mentioned his name time and time again. Ben Metzger logged more ice time for the Charlottetown Abbeys than he did for any team he was involved with. Always a scrapper. And you know, Bill Riley said something. Discipline. A Charlottetown Abbey team with discipline? I mean, you know, you've heard over the years they can't hold their temper. Well, I tell you, they held their temper without a doubt. They were the most disciplined team, and they went on to show that they were all year, Rod. All year long, and they had a focus. They were right in, in focus with what the game plan was, and Mark Cairns is the star for the Abbeys, and goaltender McCluskey is the star for Hawkesbury. Abbeys are going to move on to the Royal well, Bank Cup. Up. That's right. A week from uh, yesterday, they will be in York and Saskatchewan. And boy, I tell you what, a lot of happy people here. Well, it's nice to see them, as I said, Raj, to go in, uh, you know, the way that they've gone in. They, they, they hosted the cup, and it's like the, the Hempel Pontiac Western Capitals in the sense that, you know, you host the tournament, and uh, uh, sometimes you're there because of the host. But it's, it's nice to go in and win it, and that's what the Caps did, of course, with the Royal Bank Cup in 97. And the Charlottetown Abbeys have come right back here and won the uh, Eastern Canadian Junior A Championship here in the uh, friendly confines of the Civic Center, and they do it with a solid team effort, shutting out the uh, high-flying Hawksbury Hawks by the score of two to nothing here this afternoon. Great effort by the uh, uh, the Charlottetown Abbeys and the Abbeys Hockey Club. You indicated as well the coaching staff, uh, Al Stewart, and the whole organization deserve full marks for just a terrific year that the Charlottetown Abbeys have put forth through here on Prince Edward Island in the Maritime Junior Hockey League. You take a look at the Charlottetown Abbeys and what they've done this year. But you take a look at the regular season, this is a hockey club that uh, finishes the season with the most points ever in the Maritime Junior Hockey League with 84 points, 41 wins and 48 outings, consecutive wins, 24, undefeated in 33. They win the Maritime Junior Hockey Championship. They win the Fred Page Cup. There's only one thing left. That's right, there is. And you know what, George? Isn't it fitting that the game-winning goal is scored by Randy Taylor, 7-11 of the first period but again it's always those guys you don't get the highlight because you you know the points are what everybody talks about but for randy taylor and that line they played they were on here as much as any line in this uh, hockey game and they were certainly a part of the the puzzle that has been uh, put together for this fred page cup and uh, you know randy taylor with his first goal of the fred page cup He'll mark that one down. Can oh. you imagine? What a goal to oh, score. Tell you. And, I mean, it couldn't happen to a nicer guy. You know, no, no doubt about it. I mean, Randy Taylor, when he scored that goal, he come back, he tried to do something, but he couldn't. He has no, uh, he's not used to scoring a lot of goals, so he wasn't able to do, like, a Gretzky move or whatever. So he held the stick in the air as he's going towards the bench. And I'm sure at that time, there was not a lot of fans in here that thought that would be the game winner. It was certainly one that got things going for the Eddies, but it is the game winner and how fitting it is. And they're passing out the championship hats here at the uh, Civic Center in Charlottetown, uh, signifying the Charlottetown Abbeys as the Fred Page Cup champion. As we got Willie Hublu. Uh, he's receiving uh, something at center ice on behalf of the, uh, whether it's the host committee, but uh, Hublu will uh, pick that up as well. 
So the Charlottetown Abbeys, they're going to rest on their laurels for uh, three or four days, and then uh, they're westward bound uh, in Saskatchewan. Three hours time uh, time difference uh, between Saskatchewan and uh, PEI, but uh, they'll be listening, uh, everybody will be listening to the island uh, during the Royal Bank Cup to see how the Charlottetown Abbeys fare out in New York and Saskatchewan. The job's not going to be easy there, Rod. You get into the uh, Prairie Provinces, and uh, we've seen Weyburn, Saskatchewan, a couple of years. They were a huge hockey club and a good hockey club. And the Abbeys, they'll be in tough out there, but you know that they're going to give it their best effort. They will be. And, you know, again, it's ironic when you think about it, people that are under the gun. And uh, the guys that can be under the gun and bounce back and do real well, those are the guys that usually win championships. Mark Karen was basically on the line. His reputation was on the line after the 3-1 deficit to Antigonish. He was issued a challenge by the entire organization. He accepted the challenge, took it upon himself, and think of his goals against since that time. Three goals he gave up in three games against Antigonish in the last year to come on and win that one. Then he comes here in the Fred Page Cup, and when you get a shutout in the biggest game of the championship, you get a shutout, then you've answered the bell. And now for him, you know, you like to be able to feel good for people like that because it's tough when you're the guy. And it's unfortunate as a goaltender, they always put the pressure on you more than a forward. But when you're the goaltender and you've been called basically letting your, letting the, yourself down in the team and you come back and pick it up, he deserves to be the MVP today. And he is an unsung hero as well for the rest of the team. Rog, the final scoring summary of the hockey game. You want to go over that? Pretty easy to do this one, George. First period, it was at 7-11. Randy Taylor on a two-on-one, the second shot, I might add, of the period for the Andes. David Ambler gets the helper, and that makes it one nothing. And it uh, was 15-9, the shots in favor of the Abbeys in that first period. In the second period, no scoring to tell you about. 17-9 with the shots on goal and in favor of Hawksbury. In the third period, it is... Ryan Maxwell finishing off a pretty three-way passing play. Ben Metzger and Chris Tellum at 224. The insurance marker Well, that one put the names on the cup. Rog, uh, the season is winding down for you and I as far as junior coverage is concerned. I don't know what will happen next week, whether uh, what the coverage will be as far as the Royal Bank Cup is concerned. But uh, as always, it was a great time working with you. Well, George, the same with you. And... Uh, we want to thank all the people that were sponsors for us throughout the uh, playoffs. And, people, and the listeners and as well. And the listeners as well. A special thank you to the listeners. We appreciate your support and hope that you have enjoyed it. For those who couldn't make it to the ring, because I know not everybody can. And uh, uh, congratulations to all, to the Abbeys, for what they have done. And again, thank you very much. And uh, again, we want to uh, say a special thanks to um, TV Ads, Island Wide Channel 8 in Charlottetown, Channel 16 in Summerside, for their assistance for us to get to the areas where we just can't get on a normal everyday basis. So again, the final score here this afternoon, 2 nothing Abbey over the Hawksbury Hawks, the Charlottetown Abbeys. Winners of the Fred Page Cup will move on to the Royal Bank Cup in Saskatchewan next weekend. That's starting May 1st through to the date of May 9th. Once again, thank you to the sponsors. Thank you to the listeners. On behalf of analyst uh, Roger Hearn, this is George Matthews thanking you for being on board for the Fred Page Cup here this week in Charlottetown. And I guess perhaps until next season, we'll see you. This has been the Fred Page Cup action live on CJRW 1240 Radio and as well the Air Channel Island Wide, Channel 8 in Charlottetown, Channel 16 in Summerside. What would happen there? I just press six and then star ninety nine. I'm not hearing anything. Is that okay? I got it. I got it. Okay. Let's start again. 2201 number? Yeah.
thank you from MT and in Island Bell. <laughs> JB. Yeah. How you doing? Not too much. What happened there, JB? I don't know. I must have clicked into a commercial or something. I Is had it no just... idea. I was just uh, sitting here and all of a sudden, bang, you went right into it. You went into a commercial? Yeah. Did we come on right after when we pushed the button? Uh... I mean, after the commercials were over? Yeah, after the, yeah, then like the game was over then, but... Yeah, but I mean, it was only up until that time that happened, was it? Oh, yeah. So you don't, you didn't see anything happen on the board or anything? No. All right. That was the last, what, eight seconds there? Yeah. Yeah.